Okay, hello everyone. Um, so I'm about to start. Um, just a quick check. Is the sound okay? Okay, great. So it looks like the sound's fine. Um, 6CEF was just asking, is this game televised in Japan? It's on the net, so it's, there's a Japanese, um, server, you might say. This is, um, it's really a Korean server, I think, but, uh, it's the same, basically the same thing. They have, um, it's the official Japanese server also. And so that's what I'm relaying it here for you from. So it's, um, as you can see, it's a slow start. The players have three hours apiece. And after that, they have 40 seconds per move. I think it's five times uh, of 40 seconds. So it's it's going to take a while, I think. Um, and that's why I'm planning on doing kind of a recap of game number one. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, that's bad. Um, so just to go through the moves on this in this game. So black is playing three four points, and the big shimari. So that's uh, one of one of the modern openings with this big shimari, the double the two space six right? shimari. And so yes, so white plays an, an approach move. White can play high or low here. Um, so let's go into a bit detail. Uh, we have plenty of time. So white could play high. It's usually going to turn out something like this and maybe here and here. So this would be another way to play it. Um, and black will have a lead in territory. Probably start with an approach move here. Uh, this is close enough to equal um, that I would be happy to play it. Um, in the game, white played a low kakari. And usually nowadays you see people playing some kind of an um, answer on the right. So something like this would be very normal. That's Rob Shore. Exactly. I agree. It's pretty unusual for international tournaments um, to have only uh, have three hours a piece. So usually they're one hour or two hours or more common nowadays, I think. So three hours is a long time limit for an international tournament. Japanese tournaments still have um, some pretty long um, time controls. Like in, in, they have some of the two-day games still. So, um, for instance, Kisei or Meijin, Hoinbo, those three tournaments would have two-day uh, two-day games for their title matches, and those would have longer, eight or nine hour, I think. Um, hi, Rick. Um, it's good that the sound is good. Thanks for checking. Okay. So it's a it's a slow game for an international tournament. It's going to take several hours to finish. Um, this video, by the way, it will be I, I will leave it at my um, YouTube studio. So I mean, it, on my YouTube channel. So it, it'll be still it'll be there. Um, <laughs> okay, Gango Plano, G Gang of Plano. I don't really know where to start answering that. Uh, pros do prepare for their games exactly, and so actually, I'm gonna we're gonna come up to a move that Yang Dingxing played. And I think he's probably prepared it because it's sort of unusual. And um, they don't just sit six hours without thinking. That's that's that doesn't happen. They're thinking anyway, even if they have prepare, preparation. <laughs> and Dogen says, "What do you eat before a game?" Uh, nothing unusual. I, I I just do it the same as always, and I think that's the t the players. They're going to be in a hotel or something usually, in a lot of tournaments nowadays. I think these two are. Um, you can see them. Those pictures are from game number one. Um, you can see them in in front of computers. So they're playing in their local associations, I would suppose, um, with a referee watching, and they're playing on the net. So it's it's not like that anymore. But when when the players are in a hotel, they'll probably have some fancy restaurant food. Okay, so I, I would say Black would usually, going back to the game here, I would say Black would be usually answering something like this. And White would probably um, 
A foolish monkey. Thank you very much. Thank you for the um, thank you for the support. And something like this. So this this would be a very commonly played normal. I would call that a normal opening nowadays. Um, the moment Black played that Shimari in the upper left corner, it's it's not what we were playing before. Um, it's not what we were playing before we had AIs that were stronger than humans, but um, it's normal for now. But nowadays, I do see some players allowing white to press here. So, like, there was a point where we thought um, it was bad to allow this just because um, computer programs um, with neural networks will suggest this move for white in a position like this and it's supposed to be a really good move for white to play um but people have started to allow it so it's not a big difference and people think it's okay for black to play this way so this is an interesting move here where black could have jumped and it would be no problem so there's a big difference between jumping here um l3 Yes, okay. Leonardo de Wagner was asking a pretty good question there. She, he was asking about um, my diagram. Let's go back to that diagram. And um, so the diagram for this black move. Um, I was suggesting white would play here. And um, in the old times, you might say, just before AlphaGo, or even I would say it's before zero or before we started to have computer programs like fine art, um, Katago, and even Leela, um, stronger than human players. Um, they didn't like this move and they didn't like the fact that there was an invasion on the third line, which we thought we had a way to handle it, but the computers don't like this invasion here. So when white plays here, white can always handle the invasion with an attachment on top. Uh, it is relatively simple for white to be covering on the top and handling that invasion. And so computers like playing on the third line from to the fourth line, um, even though playing here for black is supposed to be a very big move for black, they still like white playing on the fourth line. So um, that's something that's changed with computer programs. It, it did, we used to like to play this kind of move. So going back to this, Black could have played a jump on the third line. So the difference between this game variation and um, and jumping on the third line is that when Black jumps here, um, White will have forcing moves here. And up to this point, it's pretty much, it's likely to be forcing up to this point. White could even push once more. And that's going to make this White group in the upper right relatively strong. So White can make a wide extension on the top side. Or even if black plays on the top side first, white will have potential to counterattack because white has these forcing moves at two and four. So in the game position, when black plays low like this, it is a low position, so it's probably less territory and it's low for the time being, so it doesn't have so much potential, um, for instance, to make it a real diagram. So the potential towards the right side would be when black pushes here um, if black had some kind of a position on the right side of the board, pushing here would um, develop it towards the center. So when black does something like this, jumping on the third line and then pushing, it has more force when black is trying to build something on the right side. So that's the advantage of jumping. Uh, the, but I showed you that white also has forcing moves um, pushing on the fourth line. So when black plays low, black is giving up some of that potential which is probably okay because white has this stone in the lower right corner. It's not It's not as if black was hoping to make much territory there. And the advantage of playing low on the second line is that white has less potential to, to force. So for instance, if white plays a move something like this, uh, black doesn't have to answer it necessarily. Or if black did answer it, black would answer towards the corner with maybe the kick or maybe maybe a slide here, one, one or the other. Um, or, or a jump if black wants to play solidly. So black has that opportunity, or black could play a white. So white one is a less forceful move than those pushes I was showing you in the other diagram. Or if white plays more strongly with a pressing move here, 
then black can push you and cut, and this would be more of a fight. So that's so when black plays low and then pincers, it's logical because white has less forcing moves to reinforce this group in the upper right. And so it's going to be more work for white to, to finish off, to, to settle that group. And white played, oops, jumped ahead. Uh, the one thing about this server that I don't like is that when you catch up like that, it shows you all of the moves in the game, so it jumps ahead. So this move is something that I did not... Um, I would have probably played a bit more to the right, so maybe something like this. And uh, there's the, the advantage of this move would be... Um, bottom left corner. Okay, yeah, I get caught by these interesting questions. The, the timing for a corner invasion in the lower left is... Um, black could play at any time, but maybe before pincering on the top would be better because once black plays there and white plays this move or the game move, the top side is sort of heated up because white's gonna next next move white's gonna attack by pressing on the fourth line or something like that. So black could invade the three three point um, one move earlier, but the upper the I I would play on the top side. I I agree with black's move that is still marked in this diagram. I'm just saying that with white, I would probably play here and, and wedge. This is uh, pretty standard, and white can cut on the third line or the fifth line, one or the other. So it's going to be a fight there. So the, and the advantage of playing further right is that whatever black does, it's going to be difficult for black to... Black's not going to be able to cut white off. So for instance, if black goes ahead and tries doing it, this is going to be bad because white can push through here. So black doesn't have the option of going between the white stones and cutting white off. Whereas um, when white plays the game move, I'm not sure that white is connected up. So I would be thinking um, black played here. This is a very solid move that um, I can't see anything wrong with it. But I would also be thinking of um, thinking about moves like this, which could potentially break through white's connection to cut white off. So the reason I would hesitate to play this move for white is that I'm not sure that it's actually connected to the white stones on the right side. And you might note that there's black has a majority of stones on the upper side. So black has about two extra stones plus the tempo. It's four four white stones on the upper half of the board and black has six. And it's also black's turn now. So Black has a local advantage on the upper side of the board. And it means that if Black can get a huge fight there, usually it's going to be good for Black. It's going to give Black potential to attack White. So I would be worried about stuff like that happening uh, with Black trying to split White off. And it, it looks like it could be some trouble for White. But since this move is a bit unusual, uh, my gut feeling is that Young Dean Singh has probably researched this move. And if he's researched it with um, an AI, um, he probably has an answer for any kind of attack. So that's maybe why uh, Shin Jin So sort of paused for a moment there and played the most solid move. This is a move that cannot go wrong, and it does have an attack waiting to happen next. So like, uh, let's just take a look at where White actually played. Uh, yeah, so White, White is trying to connect up there. With this move, White is pretty much connected. So if White had played something else, then black would be able to um, cleanly... White's already cut off, so so black can even take the corner point, which is really big. And so with something like this, white would be getting cut off and get into trouble on the top side of the board. So it makes sense that white connects up here, and black is building the right the upper side. And it's still the fact that black seems to have this potential attack against that whole white group on the top there. Um, he can play high on the fifth line, and if white, if white tries anything inside, like an adventurous player would start something like this, um, you can see that it's going to be bad for white on the right side there. So black can make up for the lost territory on the top side by attacking white in the center. Or else, if white doesn't do anything there, black's going to try to surround the whole top side on the fifth line. 
So I sort of showed you this move before. This is the move that white likes to play towards the right side when black has played that slide on the second line. And yes, yeah, so, so black has avoided the outright fight, which would be a bit dangerous in this case. So if black cuts here, it's just those stones that white has waiting on the top there. Um, they're gonna, they're making that group on the top that white has. If we compare it to black one and three, the white group is stronger. And also later on, if, if white does something like this, this is going to be a bit of a problem for the, the corner group too. So there's, um, this, this fight looks a bit difficult for black. And so it makes sense that black played a move like this. In this case, if white pushes through, this will be the first fight of the game, I guess. Um, and at some point black will play this move, hopefully. Or, or black could continue. This is just very low for white. It's usually not so good. Or black could play here. Yeah, I think I would probably lean towards this one. Um, something like this looks is, is probably going to be a bit too painful for white. So black could um, continue playing in the center or could play something on the side like this. I mean in the corner. Yeah, black does probably need to reinforce the corner. Okay, and since this is a, a game with three hours um, a piece, at some point I, I'd like to leave this game and show you game number one in which Yang Dinxing um, played a very good game. He had black and um, he started steadily and gradually his winning percentage given by... Uh, given by Katago. It gradually went up and up. And finally, he had something like 95 or a bit more percent. And it was about to win. And it looks like Shin Jinso was setting up a resignation, actually. And um, he made a mistake in the final semi -act. And so the compared to the... Um, the quality of the whole game, which was pretty much a perfect game for Yang Dingxing, um, that final mistake was elementary. He should have watched my video. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a, let's see, I can find a link for my video. He should have watched my um, video about semi basics because it was about that level. And so it was sort of um, really a pity for Yang Dingxing um, because it was, on the whole, it was an, an outstanding game. Um, but the final mistake was, and I, I wanted him to take a look at my video. So I, I'm putting that, this is uh, the basics of how to win a semi -act. So yeah, he needed to see that one. Okay, uh, let's take a break from this game. It looks like White has built a strong position. Um, I think... Dogen was uh, catching that when he said how much was White's last move aimed at influence in the center. And my answer to that is yes, that's exactly what White is trying to do. Um, and Black will probably try to... Um, Black can still cut on the fourth line and sort of compete with that. But White does have a strong position in the lower right corner, so White will be able to fight uh, fight there. So white's making that group strong. Um, black could also play away at this point. The lower side is is really big. Uh, a white pincer at about L L17. Um, a white pincer on the third line is something really important. So it's important for black also to be thinking about playing a move like this or like this on the lower side. Um, if you like this move, you could still play it. It's, it's probably not so terrible. Um, although people have stopped playing it nowadays. I, I think I would um, prioritize the lower side um, compared to the left side. I think I, I would prefer to deal with this position in the lower side at this point with black. Unless black is going to cut here, in which case we get it. Black doesn't have a co threat for that co, so it's going to be a fight like this. And white does have strong groups on both sides, so it's going to be um, playable for white. White doesn't have anything to be worried about in this fight. Okay, so let's um, go to the beginning and make a diagram. 
And let's see if I can find my record of the first game. Um, I'll have to input the moves. So it's, there, it is possible that I would make a mistake. Yan Dinxing in the first game here. This is game number one of the three game match. Um, this is also a fairly common play, uh, played opening where black has played diagonal three, four points and is very conscious of aiming at white's three, three points usually. So if I played this opening with black, I would be thinking of when I wanted to invade white's three, three point. Um, but he didn't do it that way. So white, um, let's see, white played here. And so, for instance, this is a position where some people would um, jump into the 3-3 point. Uh, but black played here. White played here. And black played here. So he's using his position in the lower left and upper right, which are both strong positions, to, to attack white in the corner here, in the lower, lower right corner. Um... I think my computer didn't really like this move where white is playing a bit too um, aggressively in an area where black has an advantage. And this was this move um, where you would usually expect black to be playing a honey here. This was a very sharp, a, a strong move. Oh, Lucas Nassif is asking a tough one. How do you choose between Shusaku's Kosumi? So we're talking about the upper right corner here. Um, and a knight's move to protect the corner. Um, well, the knight's move, it covers more space. So I, I guess I would choose the knight's move in a position where my opponents already had some stones and I wanted to... Um, I was thinking maybe my opponent would be playing an extension towards that position. So I would be trying to take space away from my opponent. But if black gets, so if we assume, let's just make a, if we assume black gets a position like this on the right side, then the Kosumi um, black 7 here is more effective because um, it has this pressing move next, which is easy play. Um, it's harder for white to get into the corner. And so when black has a strong position like this and is trying to build the side um, and play uh, actively, the Kosumi is actually, although the move itself seems slow, it's actually a stronger position for black to build towards the center and also keeps the corner. So it's when black doesn't have to worry so much about the right side. So just going back here, when black plays a, a nice move, uh, this is more effective when white is going to be trying to take some space on the right side of the board. So like if we just assume white plays a whole bunch of moves and is playing stuff like this, um, it's actually, um, hard to say, but white is getting less space on the right side. So it's something I, um, might play, I guess, if I'm expecting, maybe my opponent's going to try to take the right side and I want to take some of that space away. So that would be how I would be choosing that. So back to the game number one here. Uh, this was a very good move. It turns out that when black... And this is a move I'd never seen before. So it could be um, that this sort of took um, took white by surprise. It turns out white had to... In the game, white connected here. And white should probably have played the extension once. So in this case, um, if black tries to cut here, white does have a, a cut here, which will... Um, if black plays there, white captures three stones. So that would be playable for white. Or if black um, crawls, then white can... Then we would get back to... It's better for white to be extending here in the center. Relatively good result for white. So in the game, white played here. And black got the Atari. Um, and this became a good variation for black. And from here, it just gets better and better for black. Sorry, 
That was wrong. Black played here first. And white took. Actually, I think black. Yes. And so everything is going to be alive. Black's alive in the corner, and white is alive on. It was a bit painful for white, I think. And like this. Um, painful in that black is sort of pushed white around on all sides. And. Um, it's a slight advantage for black on the whole. It's nothing that would be a big issue for me, I, I guess. Uh, in a game, it's just a couple of points, maybe. But everything just seems to be going well for black here. And white plays here. So this is a very common move where white is attacked. This was um, a move white is looking at from move number eight. So uh, when white plays here, if black plays here, white's going to play a double hane. And connect up like this. Or unless white plays down like this. White has a choice here. This will start a fight um, on the side here. And white 8, obviously, is, it's working very well for white here. So if black plays here, then it depends on the ladder, of course. So what is the ladder going to do? I think white can play moves, uh, for instance, like this or like this, that would be threatening the ladder. So, so in fact, I think the ladder is probably already, it's already good for white. Yeah. So, so that when when the ladder is good for white, I'm talking about this one, where black can cut here. And if the ladder works for black, obviously this is the end of the game. Um, it's going to be bad. But white seventy six, it's already a ladder breaking move. So. Uh, so this would be a collapse for black. And so if, um, in this corner position, when white has played the approach at 8, and then white can play, then the ladder favors white, so white can play at 78 here. Uh, this generally is going to be good for white. Just checking my connection. Looks good. So this is generally going to be good for white. Um, I did do, do a video about this, I think. Um, so I don't have the link um, offhand. I don't have it ready. But um, it's a pretty common Joseki. If I got into this, it would be a bit confusing. So I, I'll, I'll leave it there. But I, I, I would say that like, if the latter favors black, white would be playing here. And black would play here. And it would be more of an even result. Um, but when the latter favors white, I, I tend to like this for white. Especially when white has supporting stones on both sides, like white does at 8 and 14, for instance. It sort of depends on the, uh, the surrounding situation here. Oops. I got rid of everything. Okay, let's get back to that. <laughs> I think I have it right here. So black played here. So um, basically black didn't want uh, white to play that 3-3 point. 
and then black invaded here and white played down here this is a very exciting variation here which i've never seen before where white cuts off the corner and black cannot capture that cutting zone at 80 but black does have a living shape here when black extends so black is alive in the corner and white is connected up on the left side there looks pretty much even locally yeah and black pulls back here yeah so it's uh, going sort of according to plan for black here and black has a slight advantage so now black plays here um yes he had the lead so much Okay, uh, Abdullah Ri um, from Twitch is asking, um, do I have any advice to manage time well in, during a game, that is? So, like, um, if you have three hours, um, players at this level, um, they're actually pretty confident of their ability to play correctly even when they go into overtime so they're actually they don't they don't care about it and they're going to use up all their time um so that's what happened in the first game here and they both were running out of time towards the end um but if i i would say if you want to feel safe you should leave um about one third of your time for for the last last part of the game just just so that if you get into trouble you will you'll have time to think about it um researching your opening is one way to to manage that okay so when black plays here he's sort of asking how white is going to answer because white had the choice of answering here which would be a bit sort of locally it would be weak or white can play here which was the game move so when white plays here if black plays here white is going to squeeze from above and capture the whole thing so that's what this move is doing for white and it gave black this forcing move so if white had played down here that would have been a much smaller white territory but this move in itself would not be so clearly forcing in fact the the one forcing move that potentially is going to be used for black is this one which is threatening to go down on the first line there um but black still has to be careful of the shortage of liberties um even when this so this would be harder for black to take an immediate advantage, um, but um, but it would be losing some territory. So white went for the territory, and in this case, like if black, if white answers here, then white would be gradually getting into trouble. So for instance, even moves like this are sort of painful anyway because black's going to be pushing white around here, and the stones on the left. They're probably not as important as black being able to play this honey here. So like if white plays something like this though, then the left side is going to, this time it's going to get into trouble. So white played here and gave those stones to black. It was a trade. Locally black succeeded in capturing three important stones, but white did get some extra territory on the left and white got sent it. So, so it's, I think that was an even trade. So here black is threatening a ladder and uses that to, to, to break out on this side. And then, yeah, black's really busy here, um, but is pretty handling the dangers fairly well. So now this group on the right part of the center is connected up to the right. Black does have an advantage in territory. So white has to try to figure out some way to, to set up an attack in the center of the board. So white played here. And yes, here. And then played here. My computer was suggesting black should play here. Looks really dangerous, but maybe, yeah. And in the game, black played here. Um, but black's winning anyway. And black plays here. Yes. And then extended and cut here. So black's threatening to capture that white stone at 136. And white pulled back. 
And now black is going to squeeze on this side. So if white answers all of those moves, or well, white can't. Uh, I mean, it's going to be very painful. So um, black would be able to squeeze like this. And squeeze, squeeze like this. So everything is forcing, and black should have no trouble living inside. In fact, that white group on the outside is probably weaker than the black group. So I think that's the idea here. And white just sacrificed those stones. Uh, but this is really good for black. It's um, Black's lead is expanded to probably something like 10 points. Yeah, I think I have it right here. And white push through. It's very um, steady for black. Like the, black's not making any mistakes. Sorry, that that last move was here. And at this point, like the computer was giving black some huge advantage. Um, I think about ninety percent, <laughs> and a fairly large lead, like ten points. That's probably more than fifteen points before Komi. And so he could have played a safe move, but it's it's a characteristic of these top players that they they don't try to simplify things. They try to play the strongest moves when they've read out that they're going to be okay. So that's what Black is doing here. He's not giving anything up. So he plays these forcing moves here. That's good. Right, so here, yeah, so White's final attack with this move, um, it's, uh, directly, this is an attack against, um, it's an attack against Black's group in the lower right, part of the center, and White's trying to set up an attack on the other part of the center for Black. And it's not going to work. Um, black could even sacrifice those stones in the lower right, but black does not. Again, he's obstinately playing the strongest moves. This was a forcing move for white. And white played here. So white is trying to threaten both black groups here. So black, white is basically, I think white is trying to set up this move here, which would threaten to cut in the center, and to surround the group with something like this. So that was the threat on this side. And black counters it by cutting. So this was black's strongest move. And so it's connecting the, the black group on this side, like this. And it's also cutting off the white group. And it's working. So black is winning at this point. And I think Shin Jin So was probably setting up to resign. And this is the race to capture, the seminar that I was talking about. Because black is winning by one move. But black played here. Um, he forgot to fill a liberty. Uh, which is... Okay. Computer prefer move 34. Oh, yes. Um, I'll go back to that, Abdullah. Uh, that's a good point. Um, okay. So, uh, Abdullah was... Me was talking about white 34 in the lower right corner. In which case, white could have cut at 35 and stopped the, the connection with Sente. Um, and that's, a, that's an issue I had with it, too. It seems they're about the same. But I'll, I'll go back to that because we're sort of at the climax of the game. Um... Let's just do the game variation first. So white starts by playing here, and this is in preparation to um, filling black's liberties in the center. Um, so white plays this exchange first. 
and then can throw in. And it's a one move win for white. So just to finish off the race to capture, black will capture, white will capture. And locally, like if black plays something against these white stones, white can play an Atari here, an Atari here, and then just capture in a ladder. So white's one move ahead that way. Or uh, if black, black can actually extend the liberties of this group by playing here. And so like, um, so it's like this on this side. And here, so black actually gets four liberties. If white had pushed from the other side, it would still be four liberties. So white plays here to take Sente. Black has four liberties. But since 199 is not filling any liberty of whites, this, this shape, it has enough liberties. So like if we just, this group, it already has five liberties. So if we just, to simplify it, we can look at it like this. And it's five liberties. So white's going to win by one move because the group can get some extra liberties with 216. So uh, now to look at what black should have done. If black had uh, played 199 here, filling a liberty, like that's the basic thing about races to capture is that you fill liberties. And for the time being, black is threatening to capture in a ladder-like shape. White would play here. In fact, in the other variation, white should have played there also. So yeah, let's let's do the other variation one, one more one more time. So just to correct myself, it's probably better for white to play here. And you can see this, this shape also has five liberties. It's, it's a more secure way of getting five liberties. The other move that I showed hanging here, it looks a bit... I don't trust this move. It's probably bad. So white, white has to play here. Okay, going back to the other variation. So black's correct move was to play here. For the time being, black is threatening just to capture the three white stones. So white's going to play here. And black can capture. So this white group, it only has four liberties. And that means that when black plays here, black's going to win by one move. Okay, well, so white has to take the two stones at some point. So now black's winning by... There's no way for white to extend the liberties. So all black had to do is fill the liberty, and it would have been the end of the game. So he was somewhere around 95% winning percentage, or maybe a bit higher than that. And um, like it went down like a cliff the moment he played that move, but he was probably winning by something like 15 points before Komi. So it was a, a very convincing win for Yan Jinqing until he played that one mistake, which was like if if I compare it to the rest of the game, it's a huge difference in um, in level. It, it, it's the, 199 here in this diagram. Filling a liberty is something that um, I could have done. I, I could have won that game, um, but it, it was after a whole day of playing, so um, they were they were tired, of course. And it's very characteristic of Xin Jin So to be hanging in there and looking for a chance to turn it around because he's very good at um finding these weaknesses you might say in his opponents and, and he seems to have you um just looking at it i get the impression he has good luck in setting these kind of incidents off but of course um it means that he's he's good at um setting them up he, and it's something that's not showing directly but it's just the fact that he's good at keeping close enough to put pressure on his opponent in these games where he, he, he could have easily lost that game. Most players would have lost that game. And he was very close to losing. So that was uh, my talk about game number one. Abdullah Ni was asking, asking about move 34, so let's just go back to that point. So here, um, if this was a life and... Uh, if this was a Tesuji problem, like those I put out in my channel, um, the answer would be to play here, and already black cannot connect. So like if, if white played something like this, and black played here, white can stop the connection by playing here. Um, 
but because this gives black some forcing moves on the side, so like um, at any point moves like this or like this would be forcing, um, it turns out that the difference was not all that convincing. And the fact that it's giving black a living shape in the corner, it means that white 36 will not be as forceful. So apparently it's not a decisive difference um, in this board position. Okay, so I, I lost 65, but yeah. Uh, so thank you for your comments on this game, and I'll go back to today's game. Yes, and we'll see how it's turned out. So I, in my previous commentary, I got this far. Yes, and black pushed through and played here. Okay, okay, so this is the board position. And black stopped there. So black, instead of playing the move I suggested, I was thinking of playing here. Um, I think the the move, the game move, playing one to the right, it sort of indicates that there's is a kind of a focus maybe um, on the right part of the board. So black is looking at that cut on the fourth line, I think. And let's see. Yeah, so that makes it seems a reasonable choice. And white has added a stone. Okay, white invades the upper side. So yes, um, and then black is going to invade the three three point. So actually, I almost said that move because um, just to demonstrate the fact that black could counterattack with moves like this, I was I showed you a variation like this where black got to attack white on the right. Um, it's probably better for white to start with the game move locally. Um, although this is only made possible by the fact that, after all, white is stronger on the right now. So white doesn't have to worry about black playing moves like this um, and continuing. So white would, white would start stuff in the corner. After the corner, later on, black would be playing here. The fact that white is already, to a certain degree, strong on the right side makes this slightly less effective for black. So that's, uh, if black plays anything like this, uh, this is a move that white might be thinking of playing immediately, which is just like, it's it's the Tesuji towards the corner. So it's, it's let's see, how is it going to turn out? So for instance, this could happen. And if black plays here and here, um, just to go very quickly into one, this would actually be working to a certain degree for black, because white has to return to the outside now, and black would be able to finish off the corner, because otherwise it's going to be a co in the corner. Um, so it's, to a certain degree that's working. So white might actually be playing on this side to take, uh, take the corner. Um, so this kind of thing... Um, would happen, it would be especially effective if black has played a move something like this on the side. So white might try something a bit stronger if black pushes. So white's local local um, aim is the 3-3 three, three point there. That's that's what white is looking at. Um, and so, it's, so black played away. Playing away is one way to handle that, because if white plays the 3-3 three, three point with black not having played any local move, um, and we, for instance, get into that variation I was just showing. It's uh, sort of more effective for black not to have the stone here. It's, it's better for it to be on some other part of the board. So um, that's why black was... It's why, That's why it's feasible for black to be playing away. So black plays the 3-3 three, three point. Yes. And so the double hane... Um, of course, we know that there's moves like extending. Extending would be an option. I think black white would continue with something on the left side like this. Or playing this move is another way. Um, and the double hane that was played in the game. Um, this is the simplest variation. Although it gives black sente and it gives black a little ponoki there. Um, what I would say about this, Joseg, is the fact that it gives white a solid territory in the corner 
makes it a move that basically it gets better it tends to get better and better for white as the game progresses and the there's less room on the board so the potential value that white could get by building a wall instead uh, gradually gets smaller as the board gets filled up and there's less open space and also the effect of black's ponuki there on the second line although it's low down it still does influence for instance the right side and the the fact that there are more stones placed on the board it does reduce the value so this is a game a board position where i'd say just judging from the number of stones i would say that it it's a position where this jiozeki is about even and if you have an open a wide open board with like only four corners played this jiozeki is usually better for the side that has invaded the through three point and gets this ponuki here and has sente so it's usually good for in this case black um if it's early in the game and as you get to the end game um, it becomes almost always good for white to sacrifice the one stone and take the corner because the corner is usually as the game progresses it gradually gets bigger so that's kind of a rule of thumb and the later in the game the more likely it's going to be good for white to take the corner like this unless you have something on the outside a big territory or something then you might want to think about it and so uh yes where did black play black pushed here yeah so this is um establishing a very solid a relatively solid area on the lower side you can see now black's move at l16 is very well balanced so i think that when white played that large knight's move on the lower side black did have the idea that it would be working well with the three three invasion what however white handled it so it, that could be one reason for black playing one to the right and now white plays here taking a position so since black did not answer that move that white played um at f3 it's sort of awkward for white to be jumping into the three three point so just to do that variation once more if white jumps in here and we get into this kind of variation maybe something like this the fact that black has not played any local move and white played into the corner it, it does give black a fairly large uh, position on the upper side um, so it would be playable for black so it's reasonable that now that black has played away white wants to actually make a stand there and it's not going to immediately be going into the corner as before okay so that's reinforcing black's connection and it's threatening to, to play here next slowly so that's making a strong shape there and also white's group on the upper side it's not going to die but like uh for instance if black does get to, to hem it in, uh, white would be forced to be trying to make uh, life with something like this. It would be a bit cramped, maybe. So white does want to avoid that. Um, has various ways of doing it. So uh, white could probably pull back and play strongly, or play even more strongly by pushing here, and then hoping to be jumping out on this side too. So maybe something like this. Of course, that, that would leave the weakness here. Um, but since white has a strong position on, on the right, maybe. I, I would I would lean towards just pulling back and having a strong position, actually. And I don't think black can uh, surround that white group. Okay, it's getting on in the... It's late morning now. So at some point, I should be thinking of taking a lunch break. Right. Okay, counting TLS uh, gave us some information about yesterday's... I was... Actually, it was Monday's game. Uh, so it was two days ago for me. Yes, two days ago. Okay. Um, and so he was in the last two seconds of his his last Biomi when he played the losing move. Um, and yeah, he was just... I would say it's not a difficult move to play the correct one. Um, but um, he was probably just a bit confused when his 
gut feeling would be that White's uh, that Shin Jin So's move was unreasonable, and somehow he got confused. So it, it's something that can happen if you're just. I I think he must have just been tired. Okay, Hugh uh, Hugh Highbottom has asked a question about the one space jump here, and it's it's going to be difficult for me to explain, but it is a good point. Um, if white plays a two space extension here, uh, white would also black would also answer like this, um, and it's going to be actually slightly more difficult for white to make a living shape because um, black has um, black has moves on the second line like this or like this that at some point can make an attack on white. So. So it's possibly, and also the fact that playing here, black seems to have a better shape surrounding. Um, I find it difficult to define exactly why the two space extension is um, bad in a way that I'm satisfied. But um, I, I think the general idea is what I'm putting, putting out here. And also the fact that when white does play the one space extension, and we assume some kind of variation like uh, like this, where black surrounds it. And for instance, if we say something like this happens, um, white has the follow-up move at seven here, which is um, perfectly, it's it's a, a good kind of a good balance there that white has on the side. So it's, it's when white does stuff like three to five and seven, um, it will be still uh, the the negative side. Uh, of that one space extension would be that white had less space but since the whole space is just about this is all there is the fact that white takes up all of that empty space on the upper side with this move at seven eventually uh, means that it was okay to, for it to be a one space instead of a two space extension so that's how um, how I I think that would be my my best explanation of that um, if it's not a hundred percent clear um i would my definition of that is that i would say it means that maybe i don't uh, understand it 100 percent myself and so that's why my exp explanation was a bit different okay so it's um it's almost my lunch time and they're about to start the middle game and we have a whole day ahead of us so i'm going to take Let's see, how much time should I take off? Um, I'm going to take uh, 45 minutes off, and I'll be back. Um, so everyone can take a nap or something, <laughs> have a late dinner. Uh, I know that people are in all parts of the world, um, but I'll, I'll be coming back in 45 minutes now. So um, I should think that the game is going to s slow up. They do have a few moves happening here um, but the game is probably going to slow up after a while and I'll come back to finish the commentary so I'll see you in a while um, don't forget to sign up to my channel and everything and I'll be back so thank you not that way yes
Okay, hello everyone. I'm back. Um, so I've had my lunch. I um, hope everyone's still around. I'll just go back and... And they've played a few moves. I'll go back and recap um, what I talked about in the first stretch. So I'll go back to the beginning here. And then I'll catch up to the, the position that I left um, when I took a break. So yes, here um, white gets to pre play the pressing move, um, which is supposedly good for white, but I'm I'm seeing black allowing this more and more. Ah, uh, thanks, thanks. So people had dinner also, very good. And black plays a pincer here. So this move was the one that took me by surprise. Um, where I, I've seen moves like like this, a bit more conservative moves seem to be more common and the game move yeah so with black i would be thinking about an immediate attack here so it was something like this and so it's something i probably have to study this a bit um get some help from a computer program or something and then maybe i'll know what's going on uh but i would be thinking of doing stuff like this and just uh trying to set up some kind of an attack against, in this case, maybe this way, uh, something like this. So I'd be thinking along this line, um, but it might turn out that it's a bit unreasonable. So um, it's something that I, I'm sort of assuming that Yan Dingxing as white was, had researched this to a certain degree, and he felt he knew what he was doing. Um, well, maybe Xin Jin So was um, not so sure of himself and his, He's playing a very solid move here, um, which is, and it's not going to go badly, um, too drastically. It's, it's still putting some pressure on that white group. And so pressing here, it's a kind of a key move that white always wants to play. But without these two stones on the left, white, um, for instance, if white had done it at this point, it probably would have been a bit premature because black would then push through and cut here. And it looks like white could potentially be getting into trouble in this fight. So if, if white played on this side, black would be pressing down on these stones. It would be a bit more painful when white does not have so much strength towards the left. So you could say that white was sort of preparing for this move, which is always a move that white wants to play here. It's a, it's a much more satisfying move to be playing than something... Uh, like this, which would be more more defensive. It would wouldn't be as a, uh, active a, a move. And since white has this extra strength towards the center, black was playing a relatively safe variation with this, and plays here. So this, um, I do have the feeling that this shorter extension, when we compare it with the long extension here, um, it does work well with the idea that maybe next move. Locally, black's going to be invading the 3-3 point in the lower left corner. Um, so, for instance, um, in the game variation like this, um, if we have white covering on the other side also, so, for instance, um, just for example, something like this, again, it's a position where um, black's position on the lower side is, is fairly well balanced with just uh, two spaces in between each stone makes it a much more solid shape that black has there um, when compared with having it one to the left. So if black is thinking of playing the 3-3 three, three point like this, I think that move at L16 um, tends to be a good move. It's, it's a move that I would be happy to have that stone at that point. So it sort of um, gives me the idea that he was already planning on this 3-3 three, three invasion. And black does have, in this variation also, black does have a very good position there on the lower side. So uh, this move at L16 is working well um, when black surrounds the lower side, or it would work well if white had a wall towards the lower side also, in either case. Yeah. So this is where I left off uh, previously. Um, so... Yes, it looks really complicated. Basically, White's plan, plan number one would be if Black just pulls back, White's probably going to just play this and slide here. 
So in this case, uh, white would be weak on the upper side, but the black group on the left in the corner, it's not so strong either. So uh, white would have um, a fighting chance against this black group. And so black played a honey here, and white went straight down. <clears throat> so after this, black covered here. I, I expected this move. Um, locally, there's a variation where black could play here and play some kind of an extension to the side. Um, and my feeling is that this is probably give, making it too easy for white. I think black still wanted to put some degree of pressure on that group on the upper side, so I would not want to do that. So black covered, and naturally uh, just living in the corner would be very painful for white. So this, this variation, uh, I think this would be too painful for white. So uh, that's probably not an option. It's just too small of a life. So white cuts. So this was expected. The ladder does favor white. Uh, the ladder is going to hit this stone that white has at P15. So it's, um, it's actually... For a moment, it might look like it's going to hit the black stones on the lower side, but it's it's going to dodge them and it's going to hit this white stone first. So the latter favor is white, and black has a number of choices. Um, I think this move, I didn't like it. Now this is like it's a, a Tesuji problem. So it's a problem for black's next move, for white's next move, that is, um, because if white pulls back here, then black can capture the corner with a common tesuji, and I'll just give it to you, the clamping move here. Uh, so this is one that if you don't know it already, you definitely need to remember it because um, it does happen a lot in actual games. And this is the tesuji for black to, to win the race to capture here in the corner. Very important move. If black had played here, uh, then black would have a weakness there on the second line that black would have to go back to and white would be able to win by it. This would be a win for white, a uh, one-move win. White has four liberties, and black only has three. Whereas um, when black plays here, black can keep white to two, um, two liberties. Um, however, in the game variation, white plays a honey on the... So this is also a tesuji, a very famous tesuji, um, which there's a joseki in which this move um, is the tesuji. And so if black answers that in any fashion, then um, let's see. Um, that was just about the only good move that black had, but white can squeeze now. And so that's going to capture black. And so white gets to connect up to the side. I think white gained a little in this variation. So to give black another option, um, for instance, with the move here, although the ladder favors white, um, black could have chased the ladder like this. This is probably the choice I, I would have taken. And black can capture the corner now. Um, and white will be able to cut here. Um, and there's going to be another fight in the center. So something like um, playing down here at some point is going to be forcing for white. Although at this point, black would be able to. So at some point, so first of all, if black plays here, uh, this is not going to be very good because... Black is losing eye space, and we'll have to return to the corner at some later point. It doesn't look like Black can easily win the race to capture. Like, um, maybe White's going to curl around, but in any case, it looks like it's a troublesome fight for Black. Um, so I, I, I think Black's not going to cut at 13, uh, but there's going to be a fight in the center like this. And white's not alive on the top either, so it's, it'd be an interesting fight. So th maybe this is the way I would have gone. Um, clamping here immediately is also a tesuji. So this is also a tesuji, and if white struggles in the corner, then black can come back here, or actually could um, pretty much capture the corner. It's better to capture on the outside. This would be bad for white. So I think black, yeah, I didn't like this very much myself. This looks just, it's, white's very happy to be settled on the side like this. Um, it's probably still a really close game. And okay, 
Uh, so here, white plays a honey on top. So this is a very aggressive move. Um, like this is a point in the game where I probably would have just be thinking, um, looking for a big point to play. So yeah, here, obviously it looks big. So yeah, this is kind of a characteristic of the top players. They just love to fight. They're, they're, um, if we compare them to the top players of even two or three decades ago. Um, there's a lot more fighting. It's, it's just more, um, they, they find uh, very active moves. So it's a kind of a characteristic of the top players right now. So I think it would be perfectly feasible to play a big move. Um, yeah, I, I would just choose this move. Um, but um, this kind of play, it's, um, it looks, yeah, it looks like the top players nowadays. And white does have the advantage that that group in the upper left corner now, that white group on the top side, is 100% alive. So, like, there's no way I can see that black would ever have the potential of taking the eyes away from that group. Unless there was some kind of a trade. Um, <laughs> Tough Sun is asking, is one a ladder break or two? So when he says one, that's probably the diagram I was showing. Um... I didn't intend it to be a ladder breaker, um, but like when you're talking about moves like this, sometimes there there are ladders involved. Like this would be two different ladders, um, and it doesn't seem to be actually breaking that ladder. Um, but move this move at three is not something I would actually be thinking about because it's it's not going to work when Black has this strong position on the left. So I would be thinking of doing stuff uh, from above. So stuff like this. I think nowadays some people might even play a shoulder hit. Um, when I was young, people liked to play a bit further away from the black stone. Um, but as as people might recall, remember, uh, AlphaGo likes to play shoulder hits. So so the people picked up on that. Um, playing from above is probably the correct attitude most of the time against this black position on the lower side. So I didn't intend it to be a ladder breaking move for any of those ladders. Okay, but maybe it's a maybe it's um, what uh, Tough Sun was saying is it's a ladder breaking move for for this move, which I wasn't thinking about very seriously either. But it is. Um, so yeah, um, but actually to be honest, I don't think Black's gonna answer um, answer here anyway. So I don't know where Black's gonna play. Black might continue um, actually. Continuing locally here, starting to trying to attack the white group, um, looking looking at the potential to cut here is something that black might actually think of doing. So it's kind of a preemptive attack that white did here, I guess. And black is answering strongly. So yeah, this is getting into a big fight. Yes, um, it's not as if the black group on the top is going to die, and so it's a question of how. What what's the quality of white's wall gonna be? Okay, so white connected. And black is pretty much alive already, so um black played away. And if we assume a white move here and black move here, black has enough room for two eyes. Or if we assume a white move here and a black move here, this is pretty much forcing too, and it's it's already pretty much alive. So um, the question is, would white have any way of killing this? And it's going to be really, really difficult. So even if we assume um, something like this, white actually needs um, some very desperate measures just to take away two eyes in the central part of this black group. And then black will always have this kind of stuff on the, on the bottom. So this is, um, bottom line is it's just not working. It's, this is connected already. And so black doesn't really have to worry about that black group. It's, it's something like it's it's a good exercise to be reading it out. Um, but um, if you don't have time, if you don't want to do the reading, you can probably just look at this shape. And um, yeah, the, basically you just have to see this move or this move or this 
um, or doing this in this move. Um, and it should look healthy enough. And, and that should be enough for a real game situation if you don't have time. Okay. The bottom left side. Okay. Uh, Leonardo de Wagner is saying, doesn't black still have a big move to play on the bottom left side, which white has to respond to in order not to lose the corner? And I think what Leonardo is talking about is this forcing move. Uh, sorry, let's make it to a diagram. This forcing move, which um, computers usually just play this um, Sargari in the corner at some random point. Like it's it's not as if it loses any points. Um, sometimes it loses a co-threat, so that, that would be bad. Um, human human pros don't like to lose the co-threat by playing this, but com computers like to play it. One of the things is that it's it's setting up this forcing move. Um, but it's questionable whether black will always want to play here, because sometimes black can play a forcing move from above too. Uh, sometimes uh, black will want to use these kind of moves uh, which usually lose points locally, but sometimes black will want, want to use all of these moves as co-threats. And so there's various things that black will want to do with these moves. Um, and it's not, we're not yet sure that black wants to play this exchange because white's just going to answer it. That's going to be it. So it really needs the context of a black stone here or immediately playing it, one or the other. So it is a big move and black does have that forcing move. Um, it's almost always forcing. So only in a case where, for instance, um, for instance, if white has a stone somewhere around here, uh, sometimes white can handle it with this move. Um, but it's, it's a really tricky situation where, where black still has wedges on both sides. Um, very bad odds. So, um, in almost every case, you can expect that white's going to answer it here. So black doesn't really have to hurry to play this move. It, it's something that black can wait for a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, Fine Art wanted to let the K7 stone go with an Atari at M7. And that's that's that looks reasonable. Okay, so let's go back to the game and take a look at that. So when white played here, uh, so this stone that's an Atari is what um, James Sedgwick is calling the K7 stone. Uh, it's K7 on this board. And black escaped it, which um, actually it's closing the border here. So that, that that's an area where black could have potentially been breaking out. And so playing an Atari at M17 would be this move. And you know that sort of makes sense. So so now if white connects here, um, in some cases black will not be playing from this side, but will be playing from the other side. Um, so obviously, and, and then black would connect here anyway. So that's one reason for it to be good. And if white takes here, uh, then there's, there's a bit more space there for black might even do, try something like this. So that's certainly, it's, it's something that I can accept as good shape. Um, It's it's probably the more natural looking move. It's, it, I, I'd say the game variation is um, actually the the less natural one. But um, to try to define what Shinjinso is thinking here is um, is what I said about the black group on the top uh, that is already alive. So since that blue, black group is alive and um, black is starting with a cut here, at some point. Um, there is some potential for kind of a co-like situation here where white does have a, a weakness in the wall. And so there's that cut is looking at the, the co here at some point. It, it, um, it sort of depends on a lot of things. So it's not as if black is going to do this immediately. But this kind of uh, threat is something that black does probably have in mind. And so I guess he's not so uptight about the whole situation. Since black's alive on the side, black's probably alive in the corner um, and seems to sort of have... Black doesn't really have a position where black can attack white on a large scale. But since this black stone at P10 is a relatively light stone, it's, it's not as if black always has to save it. Um, maybe black has kind of the initiative. And still, in this position, again, 
Um, like I was talking about how I, I wouldn't have done any of this um, back at this position. And I would have just played here maybe. Um, this move, it's kind of like, if I, I don't have a very solid idea of what I want to do in the middle of the board right now, this would be a move that would be a reasonable move. Like even if it's, if it's a, if it's a mistake, you might say it would be sort of 90%, 80%, 90% as good as the best move on the board. I, in most cases, it would be a big move. It's a big point. And for human games, I think that this kind of move tends to be more successful because uh, people do, do make mistakes. So it's a move that's less likely to be a, a real mistake is what I would say. And this kind of move, it's very dangerous because if it goes wrong, um, but of course these players, they're confident in their, but they're both confident in their reading abilities. Okay. So black has escaped. Um, so this is looking at a potential cut in white's position. So for instance, uh, white would like to be playing here and black is probably thinking the most, um, the most wild variation would be black playing here and playing a honey and just trying to cut white off there. Um, so this would be black's most aggressive active move. So black sort of threatening the connection there. If white has to answer with something like this, then black would be able to press on the side. This is going to press white down and black might just continue with something like this, which would be working very well with the lower side. So it looks like sort of like white actually has lost and that variation might lost the opportunity to be playing these forcing moves, um, which could have prevented that kind of thing. So, um, so that sh uh, shows us another possible um, candidate move for white would be to play something like this. If we just look at this and see, see how black is closed off the side like this, um, that sort of makes this a candidate. If white can handle the situation in the center for the time being, this would be a way that white could avoid that or a jump, something like this. So this is, it's a kind of a point. It's a threatening move towards the lower side and it is reducing this, the size. Uh, when you compare it to that diagram where black is getting so much, I, I think this is just, it's working really well for black. So white played the Kosumi. Yeah, and so let, it's a question of whether black can actually do that wild variation um, which is probably dangerous for both sides. So this one, it doesn't really look like it's going to work for white, unless white can get some crazy kind of a geta. A net, that is. It doesn't look like white has a valid net here. Yeah, it's just not working. So that's that's not gonna work for white. So probably uh, this is the better shape move and white would play here. Um, it looks like white should be able to make a living shape on the top. So for instance, if something like this, white could play here and here. So that would be alive. Okay. So we're caught up. N5 for O5. So black hasn't played that yet. So that's James Sedgwick giving us the fine art idea again. Before O10. Yes. Um, now I, I can sort of give a idea of uh, why. Okay, yeah. So he's actually going for that variation. Um, but this is a kind of an idea. It's questioning how white answers. So for instance, if white answers, however white answers, I think, yeah. So getting this, while, while the upper side is still important enough, but um, that would be forcing maybe. But once black plays here, black sort of committed to doing something with these two stones, which means maybe it's too late to be doing these moves later. Um, white might just ignore it this time. And so black did sort of, um, commit himself by 
extending to make that two stones. It makes that center position more valuable, more important. So that would be a reason for um, a kind of a human translation for um, what fine art is saying here. So I, I can sort of, um, I can guess that I would, I can agree to that to a certain degree. And we had this move here just a moment ago, but it seems to have disappeared. So maybe that was a mistake by the operator. Okay, Orkinas Paragon is saying, which Go server are you guys playing? And so I'm looking at it with a Japanese Go server, um, but I'm not sure what server it's actually using. It might be using the same server. Um, while I say it's a Japanese Go server, it's actually a Korean server, so it's, it could be the same one. I give it an English name, but I, I think sometimes I make a mistake there. So people using it in the in the West should be giving that information. They call it Yugen no Ma in Japan. I'd say the game is very close. Um, it still looks very close to me. Um, so black has an option of um, doing that immediately. Okay, yeah. And I, I think that white's going to be okay on the top here with this move. Yes, exactly. James Sedgwick, um, you, I think I agree completely. These things that the eyes don't like, especially fine art, um, the win rate does move a lot when it's actually just uh, one or two points and um i i say especially fine art because it sort of depends on how confident the program is so it, it depends on the program itself and and fine art is very confident in its forecasts of a winning game and also depends probably on the the strength of the the computer itself The calculating power. Um, okay. Leonardo is asking about the two stones on the left there, the two stones at J7 and K7. Can Black make profit by um, playing at H7 or something like that? Um, and um, I just say that at this point, uh, that part of this fight is is not happening yet. It's not important. So it's it's this area on the right part of the center where black is extended towards the center and is sort of threatening to cut white off. And so black has a choice here of whether black wants to go for it immediately with something like this, or does black want to try to cut off just a, a section of the white group uh, with something like this and then um, then have that move coming next which would this would of course be much more um, powerful it would be bad for white so um, white would have to give up uh, some part of the white group so is black going to be satisfied with uh, a capture or something like this or is black going to um, try to attack on a larger scale is the big question here. Anything that happens on the left is, is probably just not so important. Just because white's group in the upper left corner, it's alive already. Um, so it's it's not the point where black really wants to start the fighting. It would be a kind of a tesuji locally um, to play here, and if white pushes through to extend here, would be a tesuji a tesuji way to um, do something with those stones. It's just that they're probably I wouldn't call them the center of the fight. Um, quite yet. They, they could come into play a bit later. Uh, 
Hello, Bug Kitten. Um, well, yeah. The commentary... I don't know how much you missed. <laughs> I started at, uh, let's see, 10.30. And so that maybe you missed my first... The first leg of my commentary. <laughs> yes, Leonardo. Uh, well, he has three hours. I, I think you can do um, a few 10,000 playouts. Yeah, so I think that's basically what Black is. Um, sort of the direct threat there was this move. So let's just do it once more. Um, it doesn't really seem to be working for me. But this was kind of the direct threat that Black was making. And it, it's no good if the, the white group is alive. So if that's not working... Um, and I think the with the fight in the center, it's also looking like white has an advantage. So, in that case, it's no good. Okay, Pepper5 is telling me that Katago thinks the only moves in this position are N6 and N5. So, uh, that are, those are the moves that are threatening to cut White off. So, that would be one of these two moves. So, that sort of makes sense. So, this would be N5 and this would be N6. Um, so, this one... Again, it's threatening to cut cut white off here. Same the same threat. Um, playing here gives black a better territory, and uh, playing here, it does have a bit more potential towards the center. So when black does stuff like this, for instance, there's a bit more odds of cutting white in the center at some point. Um, with with the forcing the potential forcing move here. So for instance, like if if we have just a yeah, white wouldn't play that move though. So let, let's uh, do it this way. And so for instance, um, yes, with, with something like this, there is there is um, some potential. Black really has to um, strengthen the position on the outside a bit more, but there is some potential for a cut there in some cases. So that in that way, the extension at one is a bit stronger towards the center. Uh, while well, capturing the one stone is uh, is a better way to get the ter territory when black pushes through here. So I'd say it's one of yeah the, one of those two. It would be a very solid normal looking move, and I think um, James Sedgwick was telling us that um, Fine Art wanted Black to play this move before doing uh, this extension in the center. So. Um, that was at this point. So if Black's going to do this, this kind of move, the earlier the better. So basically Black doesn't want to commit himself um, before doing it. So Because if White plays something like this anyway, uh, Black doesn't necessarily want to have that exchange in the center. I think that was making Black's group a bit heavier. Okay, it was earlier instead of M6. M6? Okay. I'm not sure about that one. I'm not sure exactly what it means. So I'll leave that. Okay, so Shin Jin So is still thinking about it. Mm hmm. Well, I have no idea of who's going to win yet. So yeah, I can't. I can't promise you that you'll have success. But I can wish you good luck. I'm talking to Jack Singh here. He's, he's bet all his fox coin on white. But it'll be more exciting if uh, Yang Dingxing wins because that'll give us a third game. And yes, so... And that'll be tomorrow. Um, so it'll be one day from 
this live broadcast and I'll probably do it for you. So I, I mean, I, I want to do it for you. And so, yes. So if Yang Dingxing wins today, then it's going to be a live broadcast again. So for the for us watching the game, it's probably a happier result. Okay, so now Black plays an Atari. This is the second time I've seen the Atari here, so um, let's just hope that this time it's for real. <laughs> Last time the operator took it back, so we'll we'll have to see how that turns out. Hello, uh, we got Raiders on the Twitch channel. Hi, Cloisus. Clusius. Yes. Another YouTuber. Uh, Nye Bjerrix. Um Yes, they are playing now. The game is live and it's being broadcast on various servers, actually. Um, so it's a live broadcast and my commentary is live, too. Oh, Roberto Ben is asking the same question on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> okay, a, a variation where white gives up the P9 two stones to save the top. Um, I sort of doubt that one. That's James Sedgwick uh, again with fine arts variation. Um, I think White's going to be okay with connecting. Yeah, well, I guess Yan Dingxing agreed with me. Black pushes through. So now if White answers everything here, it's probably going to be dangerous. So I think it's going to be a trade. So just to give a variation where white answers everything. Uh, let's see. I think black's going to play it this way. This just looks uh, looks dead. Looks dead to me. So um, And the center is not going to work out for white either. So this is just bad. Black can even take an old ladder. No. And it's still cut off. But I think black's okay with this one. So, yeah, white probably has to sacrifice those stones. M10 or N11? M. Okay. Um, so yeah, M10 or N11, um, I don't get, there was something before that maybe, but, um, White's probably going to answer something in the center, so a move like this or like this would be, um, would be options that I would think of. Thank you, Lionel. So yeah, I don't think White's going to seriously think of saving those two stones on the top, but it is a question of how exactly White is going to play in the center, because White does have moves like this too. Um, White has any number of ways to, to play locally. You know, for instance, this would 
I see, yeah. This would be one way to capture. Yeah, but I, I like this move because it goes on a larger scale. So if black captures here, um, white would then be able to do stuff like this and start building on the center of the board. This looks good for white. Okay, uh, Rick Rubenstein is asking how much Aji is left after the trade. And it sort of depends on how black adds a stone, but um, if black plays something like this, there's no Aji at all. Okay, James Sedgwick is giving us uh, the idea that P12 was a mistake and M4 was urgent for white from fine art. And that M4 move is it's a move. Um, but, um, like, it's going to be a wild variation there. So um, it's actually something that was um, interesting here. So, so the idea that after this move, um, the reason that white wants to play p12 is pretty clear because if white plays um something on the other side black is going to get this fantastically good position towards the lower side so there's a good reason for white to want to play that um and the idea that white wants to improve uh, the upper side with something like this so uh, um it's something that is conceivable but um it's going to be really difficult to make it work in a real game situation is is how i would that would be my take on this move it's something that passed through my mind and i don't understand it well enough to be uh telling you guys all about it so it's, it's not something that i would that's that's basically why it was sort of missing from my commentary so yeah i i understand the move at p12 a lot better than that move and on the whole, I think this is going fairly well for white if white just sacrifices those stones on the top. Um, it's, it's probably a fairly close game. Hmm. Indeed. The thing about these computer programs is if you believe them all the time, they will take you into crazy variations that are very difficult to, to calculate. So sometimes it's a good idea just to play the move you like that you think is better. Nia Blarix is asking, which is the time setting? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's important. It's three hours each, and they have uh, five sets of 40 seconds in overtime. So um, it is a lot of time for an international tournament, although they have reduced the overtime from one minute to 40 seconds. <clears throat> Black's triangle shape. 
Yes, you're talking about the three stones in the center, yes. Right, well, um, doing something in the corner right now, the problem with that is that um, the center, the threat of Black's move there is pretty immediate. So, um, for instance, doing stuff like this and then trying to live in the corner would be bad because the center is not going to hold. Um, so what White, what worth, is worth thinking about is is White gaining any extra Aji with something like this, where maybe White can be doing this? Uh, does White getting any, get anything out of this? So for instance, um, Yeah, so something like this variation um, doesn't seem to be working, though. Not quite. Yeah, I don't really see anything coming out of this. Um, yeah. So yeah, that would be what White is maybe what White is thinking about right now. <clears throat> right. I agree with James Sedgwick who's saying that would that would be how a white move um, at some earlier stage, a white move it here, could have changed the equation of what's happening in this local variation. Um, but it, it, it's going to be, black's not going to answer on the left there. It's going to be a complicated and very subtle difference. Not something I really want to get in. I, I, it, I will probably find it confusing. <laughs> Okay, so we're, let's see, I think we're about three hours into the game. And so they've maybe used close to half of their basic time. So yeah, that's a lot. So yes, if I was white, I would be trying to conserve my time to, to a certain degree. Um, and I, I don't know, it's, I guess it's really close, but I, I would be sort of satisfied with how this was turning out if I just sacrificed the side. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, James Sedgwick is giving us a lot of nice comments here. Um, but yeah, I think the fact that uh, the fact that Yan Jingxing was in time trouble um, did um, did calculate into his mistake at the end of the game. Um, but yeah, it's not as if the rules were um, something they didn't know about. So the players are supposed to be dealing with that. And they're, they're, they are good at dealing with that kind of thing. So what might have been called his unwise use of time, um, it's just because although he played almost a perfect game up to that point, it was the fact that Xin Jinzo was putting a lot of pressure on him, keeping it close enough to make it difficult. Although at the end, I, it, I, I would have been able to play the correct move. So it's, um, it was a pretty... Um, the mistake was pretty bad. It was, it was a lot worse than it had to be. Okay, white covered. 
Okay, so I didn't expect that one. So white covered here. And black plays from the honey. So let's just make a variation here. So white's going to cover here. And uh, if black pushes through, white can play here. In this variation, now if black wants to kill it, if black wants to kill it, I can't really see a good way for black to try to do that. Um, so for, in for instance, if black plays this side, uh, white can play here, and this is going to be easy. Uh, so anything towards the center is not working. If black plays something towards the corner, then of course white lives this way. Uh, so this is a, a bent four shape that's alive. Black has a has to find a move that accomplishes both things, so it prevents both of those. This would stop white from making two eyes in the center, locally. Uh, but white can now play here, and this is going to be alive too. Or or white can play here. It's it's alive anyway. So that's not working. Black doesn't have any way of killing this white group. Um, yeah, it's just not going to work. I'm just uh, playing with this now. So it's, it's just not working. And so that's not a problem for white. And that should be okay for white. On the other hand, if black chooses to push through now, white would cut here. And I don't see what black has gained. Okay. The crane's nest tessuji, maybe. Okay, Bug Kitten is saying the Nanjing Cup is starting up again soon. So I think it's the next game is uh, the 21st. And it's going to be Iyama and let's see, that's Miyuting and KJ are still Chinese player, two Chinese players. And then there's Shin Jinso. And so he's down to the last few players. And there's a couple of Japanese players left. There's, I think it's Ichiriki and Yosto, um, who is. Um, I'm from Kansai King, he's in the Kansai King. Um, so there's some extra players, but of course, I would call Iyama the Japanese, the ace player, the star player of Japan. Um, so, um, for, from Japan's point of view, they would like him to finish, go on to the end, but he does have some tough opponents coming up. So I think that starts on the 21st of this month, and again, I will be trying to do live broadcasts for those. And Nye Larix is saying uh, thank you for my problems and stuff and my videos. And I'll keep on going. So thank you. It's your support that helps me keep on going. Uh, Tough Sun is asking a really deep question here when he says, How many moves ahead might you read in a position like this during a game before settling on a path? And in this fight here, so in a position like, let's get back to the game. So it's okay. So black did end up cutting there. And I don't really see anything happening with that white group on the top. So the question is sort of what white was trying to do with that move at 04. If white doesn't have any Aji, then there was no point to adding to the sacrifice there. Um, and I guess black's move at N, N8 was just adding a little Aji there potential escape or a potential Atari from below. So just, um, for instance, moves like this that are always forcing or in some extreme cases, black might extend here. Um, it doesn't really look all that likely, but like if, if, if this, if this point got filled up, this is something that, um, it would suddenly start to be a, p a p potential move. So stuff like that could happen. Um, so, so I'd say that this move here, playing the Hane first and then pushing through, it is a shape move, it's a Tesuji, and it was just um, adding a little Aji to the position in the center. When you compare it to 
the position where white has uh, played here, which would be very good Aji for white. It would be a much more settled shape. And white would be able to play away then um, without no worries. So I don't really understand why white covered here just to sacrifice it. Um, it's not clear to me that white has any significant Aji potential added to those white stones. Okay. Um, the N8 for the, yes, the N8, N8 N7 exchange. So, uh, yeah, I think I just explained that. And yes, Tough Sun is asking how many moves I might read ahead. So the players, uh, when white plays a move like that, uh, so for instance, this move, or, or if white had made the choice to play this way, um, you have to at least read out or, or Black's previous move, even. Um, any of these moves that are making a choice. So when Black makes the choice to, to play um, play here now, or to play here and go on with this variation, when Black makes that commitment, Black has to read out to the point where the local position is resolved. And that that's as far as you probably... Like, you could go on reading in different parts of the board, um, but when you don't know exactly what your opponent's going to do anyway... Uh, that part of the reading is quite often it's meaningless um, when you just get up get get on a completely different variation so you want to read out until the local variation is finished which can be anything from uh, about three moves to something like 15 20 moves it depends on how complicated the local situation is and when it's local um, when it's local um, I would say in general, professionals are pretty good at reading it up um, when it's just a local fight. And when, when it gets, starts to fill the whole board, it gets more complicated. But in general, um, pros are pretty good at, at reading out the local positions, like when, even when you compare them with um, computer programs. So that was a trade. And, okay, white started with this move. So, again, white's playing from the fifth line. Um, and the direct threat is towards the lower side, obviously. Okay, what's Jesserak saying? After white plays N9? Mm-hmm. White would play O5? Something like uh, O. Black would play O5. All right, yes. Well, giving black less territory, that's it, yeah. So so this is the game variation. It's, it's quite similar, right? only I think that black is getting a bit extra territory on the upper side. So the direct threat here with white um, J15 is, uh, for instance, white's threatening to jump in here and reduce the black territory a little bit uh, more. But the, the real threat, the kind of hidden threat there is that white's... Um, I might have done this immediately, actually. I, I might have done it like this. Uh, this looks like it's a, a fairly big area that white is potentially going to get in the center anyway. So I would I was thinking that white would do it immediately. White's trying to make it even better than that by playing... Uh, yeah, obviously black's going to jump out. But white plays here. Um, and if black plays anything below, then white can do this. This would just be too good. It's it, it's just... black. There's no chance um, that... There's no chance that black would do this. Um, of course, people do a lot of reading that doesn't come out in the actual game, as Rick says, Rick Rubenstein, but yes. Um, throughout history, it's true, I think. You know, um, but the, the, I, the point is that in the local fight, if you're reading out the local fight, um, then one of those variations is going to happen in the game. So so you're it's it's useful, I think. Okay. Uh, Abdallah Ri is asking, how much is a teaching game with me? And I, I like that. So um, I'll put out a, a link then. And you can find out here, it's $50 for uh, support for a monthly game. And I'll give you a link in the Twitch... Uh, messages too. 
just take a look at my page there. And thank you for asking. Um, and there is a $50 tier where you get um, monthly teaching games. And like if, if you don't want to do it indefinitely, um, being a member for just um, one month is also an option that you have. Just notice I'm sort of encroaching on the on the text here. So. Yeah, I'll leave it. Oh, go Baduk, thank you very much. Okay, so black obviously black black's gonna jump out. It, it's um sort of a no-brainer that black's gonna jump out here. So black jumped out and white jumps in. And so locally black is attacking white. Um but probably won't be able to capture the, the white group. And that, that would be an extreme result. So black's gonna try to attack and uh, let's see. Look at this white group in the center. It doesn't have two eyes yet. So that's what black is doing with this move. Black, um, black would like to be able to save these stones also so that black might eventually have a potential attack against white in the center. So white, black has to t save these four stones, but also has to save the two stones on the left. So it's a, it's a lot of, that's a lot of work that black has to do. So it's, it's not going to be immediate. Uh-huh. Chibiani Beltran is, um, that's Chinese script. It looks like he's saying, um, he's egging, um, Yan Dingxing on. So he's, he's giving some support to Yan Dingxing there. <laughs> All right. Black E15 starting to look powerful. E15 is a forcing move that will will um, be working with the attack that Black has on this white white group. So yeah, the fight is heating up. Um, just looking at this, I sort of doubt that this white group is in any immediate danger, but it's going to be sort of uh, floundering around in the center of the board. Um, I would guess it's going to live. So that would be the most likely. Um, Thing to happen so the my idea with black would be that in the process of allowing that white group to live i'm going to somehow set up so first of all it, um i need to have th this group healthy somehow and it, it's there's depending on what happens in the centers in some cases that black group is going to be surviving and then then i would be thinking of escaping with these two stones eventually and there would be a possibility that white's group is not 100% alive. Although if white plays first here, then it's going to be alive. So black would be, at some point, black would be, would need to play this move. And white would have only one either. So there's this potential, um, a bit far-fetched, but with a strong attack on the lower side, there are some cases when it can become an issue, this, this attack in, in the center. And that's just about the only weak white group has apart from this lower side. And that's one of the reasons why I sort of doubt that it's going to die is that white doesn't really have any other weak groups. It's just that group in the center that is potentially going to come under attack, but it, it really, to be frank, it will take a lot of preparation for that attack against that group to, to have any power at all.
Right. Uh, so Bug Kitten here is uh, showing us, uh, talking about an interview to Go Sega, and he was asked how many moves he could see ahead. It's always a difficult question because there's difficult. Um, previously, I was talking about how what what is necessary. Like you want to be able to read out the local variation, and it's maybe not so important to be able to read out uh, the whole board position. Um, but then even in local fights, sometimes you have, so like an extreme case would be a ladder, in which case it just takes a few seconds for you to read out maybe something like a hundred moves. And it's just like automatic. Um, but then you could have very complicated positions where um, players of the strength of these two world champion class players can make the mistake at the first move. So they haven't even read out correctly one move. So there's um, the difficulty varies um, to a, a very large degree. And then sometimes you don't even have to see ahead. So like a, uh, in some positions, um, so I would give an example by showing you this position where uh, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't see that move. I wouldn't be thinking of playing this one and I would probably be thinking of playing some just a big move like this. This is the type of move that you can play and you can be reasonably uh, confident that it's going to be a, a fairly good move. It's not going to be a bad move. Um, and it's a move that doesn't require any deep thinking. It's it's like um, you can play it fairly confidently that it's probably the best move in the local position. Um, and you can play it without any deep thinking. Like um, if, if I really wanted to think about it, like I could compare it with moves like this and this. Uh, but in a real game position, I might not, not even think about that. And then you have positions like this very complicated situation in the, in the center, in which case the players have to actually do some reading for every single move they play. And so if, if everything is going according to plan, uh, maybe they can rely on their previous uh, calculation. But uh, sometimes the opponent plays an unexpected move. So... They have to uh, check their reading maybe every time they play a move. Mm -hmm. Yes, Kitani, there were some players, well, even in the, uh, the 20th century, um, when they started to use clocks, even when they did that, they, they had very long time limits. So I think it was like even in uh, games that were not title matches, they had games that lasted more than a day, I think. And um, so they had very long title matches, uh, tournament games. And they had time to think about that kind of thing. So there were players like Kajiwara, um, Tada Katsuji. Um, I could name a number of nine dons. Um, from, from the 20th century, who spent huge amounts of time thinking about some of their moves. But A.E. Salon is saying, talking about Takemiya here. Takemiya Masaki was a player who usually did not spend a lot of time on his game. So he, he um, there was one situation where he was in the Nadare Joseki, and he claimed that he never learned the Joseki, so he had to work out the move on his own. Um, I don't really know if that's true, but he, there was a, a game where he spent a lot of time on one move. And sometimes he goes after big groups. So when he kill, kills a good big group, sometimes he uses some time. Okay, just catch up with the game for a moment. Okay, so it's like this. I think I'm caught up. Good, yes. Uh, so, Ikichin is asking, uh, does playing online versus, how does playing online and playing in person compare? Um, and so, um, after I got Katago on my computer, uh, I haven't been playing online so much. 
Uh, I've been playing with Kato a little bit, but not online as much as I did before. Um, but I would say that when I was playing online, um, it actually um, made me less heated up emotionally about the game. And so sometimes it had a good effect on my play, actually, because um, I wasn't quite so much caught up in the, in the games I was playing. And so was, um, for some reason, I wasn't thinking it, it wasn't such a big deal whether I won or lost or something like that. So there was a the, the emo emotional uh, situation of um, myself was was different, which seemed to have a good effect in my case. Some people would say that um, they didn't like to play online because it changed their intuitive feel of the go board and so uh, that that's probably true for some people but um i didn't have that problem jean sebastian it looks like a french name so i'm probably mispronouncing it the chesser I, I probably shouldn't have even tried that but yeah uh an unrelated question the most underrated players of all time uh, well, uh, just about a week ago, I did a, um, I did a live stream about, uh, and I can't pronounce his name, <laughs> uh, Huang Longxing, Longxing, um, uh, an ancient Chinese player who was, uh, I think it was 16th century, um, somewhere around there, um, and that era of Chinese players who were contemporary with um, the golden golden age of Japanese Go. So like there was an era there in the Edo era where Japanese players were pretty awesome. And we had players like Hoimbo Dosaku and stuff like that. Um, and everyone thought that the Japanese players were definitely stronger. And it's really hard to say actually because the openings were just completely different with the Chinese still playing um, those placed moves, the star points diagonally before they started their game. So they had a completely different opening and, uh, but they were really very, very strong in the middle game. So, um, um, they're probably underrated that, that era of Chinese players. Um, that would be one example. There were some players in Japan who were sort of overshadowed by Gosegen and, um, players like Sakata, there was a player like Sakata Eo was one of the top players in Japan. There were players who, like Takagawa, I would say. Takagawa Kaku is one player who was sort of pretty much wiped out by Sakata alone. But he was very strong against just about everyone else. So maybe he's underrated. Okay, Jack Singh is asking about the Ink Cups final. I'd be interested in any information because I don't really know either. Um, all, all that's on my antenna right now is um, this tournament and the following Nanshin Cup, which I plan to do live live broadcasts for. And I think in, the Ink Cups must be sometime after that. I just don't know. Okay, Bug Kitten is asking you about Shua and Joa. Those were two two Hoimbo players, two two players from the Hoimbo house. Um, I I think actually Shua is an underrated player. I I think Hoimbo Shua was very strong. Um, he was the elder disciple of the Hoimbo school. El, uh, elder, um, he was a bit older than Hoimbo Shusaku, who was act naturally a a, a favorite. Um, but Shua was a very strong player and he, he played a very interesting game because, um, he didn't really have a single style. He could play all sorts of games. Very interesting player to study. And I think he's stronger than Joa, but, um, it could be, I just don't like Joa that much. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I would like to be talking about the game. 
it looks like white is trying to put some pressure on the black group on the right side also um but it, it, it's obviously going to be stronger than the white group on the left so let's see yeah um So this move here, this is a very patient move. Um, if white answers locally, I don't think black's going to extend. I think black's probably going to play it this way and just build some strength towards the center. So you can, that's what I was um, talking about previously when I said that in some cases, um, black's going to be, let's just make a hypothetical variation here. In some cases, black's going to be hoping to attack white in the center of the board with something like this. So that's the, basically black is saving those four stones in the center with this move and just leaving the option to attack white, stopping white from capturing those four black stones and making something like 10 points there. And in some cases, uh, black's going to continue with something like this and get some turret points here, or maybe just like this. Um, getting some points towards the center in some cases. So it's a move that has some territory attached to it, and it's getting rid of some of the threat on this side. Uh, by adding some black stones in that area, it's going to make it easier for black to uh, fight fight back here uh, against moves like this or like this, taking some of that weakness away. And it's a very patient move that's sort of typical, I would say, of Shinjin So. And white's just trying to, to sort of break up this general area, try, try to keep keep black um, not so safe. So white's, white could be thinking of continuing locally with, for instance, something like this or something like this, just to make it a bit more difficult for black to link up in the center of the board. And white does have to be careful of that group on the, on the bottom there because it's not very strong. Um, so there's a... a a balance there that white has to keep and white really does need to do something about the group on the bottom side also but these players uh, yeah especially young dingshin i've seen his games before he does play a very scary game so he, he there's a kind of a tensity tendency for him to leave these weak groups and find ways, and it was working really well in the game one of this series. Okay, a lot of action on the tweet, uh, the the chat here. Hmm. Right, uh, YSF Memories and Leonardo de Wagner were talking about um, how ancient players seem to play better middle games and end games, or at least compared fairly favorably with modern players, is because they had more time. Just so at the, even at this level, this game, like in the game number one, uh, you see players at the top of the world who are making mistakes, um, basically because they're short of time. So there is that factor. And here, Xin Qingzhou is playing as if he's winning the game. And it's a kind of a defensive move there that he played. That white doesn't have to answer locally. Um, so he's he's going for a, for an end game. White did get a big territory on the top right. White took away black's territory on the on the bottom side. So um, that was a choice White made. I still would have... Um, let's see, I, I would have been thinking... Let's see, let's go back. So yeah, this move here. Um, sort of hoping for the dream variation where White gets to play all of these moves, which would be just too good for White. Um... I would have been thinking of playing playing this move immediately. So this would be a simple way to play, which would be working if we assume that white is ahead already. So maybe this kind of move, um, he didn't feel safe with that very easy. So white is not getting anything in the center. 
but white has trashed the whole lower side. So um, maybe I should try to take a look at territory here for just a moment. Yeah, so we're at this point. Um, okay, white's continuing the fight here. It's probably pretty close. Like if, if we can call the upper right corner a black territory, um, it does look like black has more territory. But it's not a huge difference. So um, white can get something back on the left side maybe. Looks like white's group on the lower side is okay still at this point. Since white added a stone to it. And white also has something close to 40 points. Hmm. Yeah, so it's, clo it's close enough to make it a close game. Right, Bug Kitten says that Lee said all said he'd like to try longer time controls at some point. Um, I think there's some of the Chinese and Korean players do sort of have um, a wish to try out the, the two-day game um, situation where they have something like 15, 16 hours and they adjourn the game after the first day. And it was, uh, it's a very Japanese, well, since it, the, Japan was the only country that actually did that, it's kind of a Japanese thing that the other countries don't get to do. And so there's some of the players who are sort of interested in trying that out, I think, um, which is understandable. Okay, J3, yes. Um, Intravix is asking, can Black easily get something on the right attacking J3? Um, it's not going to be easy. Uh, White does have a fairly solid position in the center. So, and, and that group, after White has pushed at I13, that group on the lower side, is, it's not an immediate danger. Yet. So Black has to be careful of the group on the right also. It's not, it's not completely solid yet. There's some weaknesses there. <laughs> James Sedgwick is saying, Lisa will ask for longer time controls at four hours main time in the 10 game match with Guli. Um, well, yeah, when we have Japanese games that are much longer than that, something like nine hours or something, four hours still is, a, is not considered long, I guess. It is now, but it, not from the Japanese point of view. So now I think Black is sort of in a position where he wants to think about continuing attacking in the center. And so Black has these um, Black has these forcing moves in the lower left corner. So like moves like this, or maybe the honey at three first. Uh, so Black has that potential to cut off that route and then would probably want to continue something in the center. Uh, one of these two moves. To continue to attack white, uh, again, I would say that the white group is going to be okay, and it's also going to be relatively difficult for black to attack the the other white group um, with a move um, in the center here. That's also a group that is, since the upper left corner is completely alive, it's, it's also a group that might be difficult for black to complete the attack here. Uh, but black will be looking at something like this, a variation. It's, it's, that's what I would be thinking about in general. So Black does want to try to attack a little bit more. C12, C12. Um, yeah, C12 was is a big move. It was a big move always. So we're talking about the extension on the left side. Um, it's not a move that would lose the game. 
Um, but somehow I, I get the feeling that it's it's not going to be played in this game. And I, somehow I feel that continuing um, fighting in the center is probably more effective. Right. Locally, it's a very good move, yes. Um, YSF Memories is asking me to compare the quality of the games with the three-hour mean time versus the two-day matches. Um, actually, the two-day matches are very physically challenging, I think. And so actually, I don't think they compare favorably with uh, what we call classical era games, like when they didn't have time controls at all, and when they would adjourn the games and continue them at some other day. So the players would adjourn the games and then they would come back fresh to continue the game. Um, and these were, they did this mostly with relatively casual games. So they weren't games where the honor of a school was on the line, but they, um, even though they were play uh, friendly games, you might say, um, the, the play was a very high level. I think part of it was the fact that the players did not have to exhaust themselves in playing the games on a relatively short period of time. And although there's a lot of time in these two-day two, two matches that Japan has, um, it is physically challenging for the players, I think. And so I guess my... Uh, wasn't really a direct answer, but I would say that there's... Um, I'd say the quality of the games differs more with the ancient games uh, being a higher quality towards the end of the game. Um, and so the quality difference between the two-day game matches and the three-hour main time matches probably not as not as big. Okay, so Black is continuing to reinforce the center. This is actually sort of a forcing move. So. Um, if white ignores it, and we get into this position, it's already looking like black's going to win. So in this semi, black has five liberties and white has only four. So black can just continue feeling liberties. Uh, white could avoid that by going down here, in which case now the, the semi is going to favor white. Black has only three liberties. And white, I would say, like, if we keep it simple, we can say that white has four liberties at least. So white's going to win by one move. Uh, but this would be a bit painful with black cutting off this area. So that's why I think white's probably going to answer that. Oh, uh, white answered there. So that was one way white could answer um, instead, of, uh, instead of a move here. Which would be the direct answer. Covering on the second line, of course, is that's a move that's worth something like probably close to 10 points. And it's it's going to win the race to capture when black does this, because um, in this position, white actually has, um, although there's only four points directly in contact with the white group, this actually has more more more, more liberties. So there's an extra move that black's gonna have to pay to fill white's liberty. So if we just look at it locally, uh, it's gonna be like this. Uh, where black has no way to push there. So that's the extra liberty that white had. So white wins the race to capture. While playing a, a move that's about 10 points, um, and it looks like it's going to, to a certain degree at least, it links into the corner situation, um, which I think it's going to be okay for black, but there, it's getting to be, there's some bad Aussie there. So it's gonna, I'm, I'm going to be interested to see if... Um, if white can sort of manufacture anything significant in the upper right corner, I I, 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 don't, I don't see anything myself yet. But for instance, um, if we say white plays here and black plays here, then one uh, po possible variation would be white playing this kind of thing and squeezing all the way. So that would be an extra five points or something like that, that white gained um, 
by getting that stone at R10. So that would that would make R10 actually larger than uh, 10 points if white gets to squeeze like this. So uh, black is still playing the local position. Um, it could be that black is going to play the whole sequence here locally. Um, one might say it's sort of force soling that squeeze for white that I was just showing. Uh, no, Leonardo de Wagner was asking, um, okay, he actually fitting, oh, that was Ikichin. Let's answer Ikichin's question first. For title games that take place between two days, are the players allowed to have a board in their rooms between days to go over possible situations? Um, that's interesting. I've, I've, um, I've heard some of the top players in the world talking about that kind of thing. And one thing they say is it's it's not allowed. <laughs> and then they say it would be a bad idea anyway, because the players um, actually um, consistently, the players who fought title matches um, that I talked to, like people like Otake and Chochukun, um, they were saying that uh, it's more important to get a good a good night's sleep. <laughs> and that that was their big issue with the two game two day games was that they were not getting enough sleep and then they would mess up on the second day so staying awake to research the game um apparently it's not a good idea anyway um so they're supposed to get a good night's sleep and they they in fact i i saw players like Chochukun, he would play shogi which is japanese chess or he would play some other game um with people uh, in a kind of an attempt to forget the fact that he was in an, in the middle of a title match um so he would be doing that kind of stuff some people would be drinking alcohol um just trying to forget that they were all of the tension of the first day of the game and um go to sleep a salon is saying that some people lose a lot of weight during their game, well, day one, I would say during their games, there are some players who have trouble eating uh, during a game. Um, I I think I stay fairly stable, so it's, it's not a case for me. There are some players who don't don't eat, they don't drink very much, and they do lose. Um, there are stories that say they they lose weight, but um, I don't think that's universally true. Chochukun is very good at shogi. He's a very good shogi player. Um, I think at least there was a period when he was playing a lot on the net. And I think everyone knew who he was. <laughs> but he was a st fairly strong player. He he's a strong player. Okay, back to the game. Okay, I didn't expect that move. So with this move, Black is trying to set up a squeeze from the center. Okay, so that took me, but I just didn't, it didn't cross my radar. So um, if white answers here and black crawls, black's going to win this race to capture. So um, if white plays here and black plays here, white can capture the three stones, but black gets to cut off two stones in the center. Or, or at least the potential would itself would be big, but yeah. Um, so if now if white plays here, White has four liberties in the center of the board um, with two hanes here. Black's group here, um, there's the famous saying that you gain a liberty with the two hanes on the second line or something like that. I, I probably admit, um, it, paraphrased it, yeah. So um, this black group, although it has only two open points, it's going to cost white three moves to capture it. And black will be able to squeeze from the center. So like this. So so black gets all, all of these moves um each move improves black position to the point that black has an eye on the second and first line and also has an eye in the center so black has um black has extra eyes like black could um if someone wanted to buy one of those eyes black could sell it so that means that black has a very strong group there and can feel safe in going ahead to start attacking in the center of the board so black could be very loose about how black continues oh yeah I, okay let's let's give you that variation once more let's, um so white 
played here, black here. So black would be able to be very, um, wouldn't have to worry about the group on the left, on the right at all. And would be able to be playing moves, for instance, like this, um, very loose moves that were more active in attacking white's group in the upper right area uh, would be um, things that black could be thinking about. And black wouldn't really have to worry so much about the connection of every stone that black had towards the right. So it would give black a lot of extra potential power. So how is white going to deal with that? Um, I don't really see any way that white can... Like the Tesuji would be to play here. And then if black connects to play here. So this is the Tesuji where white plays like this. Um, it's not going to work 100% in this board position. So like if black cuts here, it's the same thing if white cuts here. Uh, again, it's the fact that black gets to cut it four. Or if white plays here... Uh, it's not really working for white because black can extend his liver. So, um, actually, that's not working for black, is it? So, so there is the... Oh, but it's, yeah, sorry. <laughs> that was simple. Um, so that was quick. So it's, it's not really working for white when white has this vulnerable situation in the corner. Okay. Okay, so they did this trade. So that, that was functioning for black. Uh, this was a move that I, I actually completely missed it. Um, but it's working in a way that black got to capture the two stones here for the time being. This gives black a fairly strong position. So it's the same story where black has a fairly strong position here now. It means this group is alive in the lower right. It means that black is free. Black doesn't really have to worry about the connections so much. So again, black has the option of doing something like this, for instance, in the same way. That really worked. The raccoon dog's belly. Yeah, that was that was the move I was trying to show for white, but it just doesn't work in this position. Oh, Stephen Kaisjak is asking about how they whether they isolate the players. They they sort of surround them in a uh, in the group. So there's there's someone from the sponsor who is, um, or or maybe a referee who is sort of keeping an eye on them. And they're okay when they go back to the room, but they're they're probably isolated from the outside. I don't really know the details of exactly how they work it out. But they 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 don't have their phones or anything. They don't have any. Um, they they don't. They have to give give up their cell phones for the duration of the game. Okay. Okay. Fine art didn't like black white R10. Uh, so this squeeze here. Okay, Leonardo is asking about the raccoon's squeeze. I think it's um, I'm not so sure about the English name there, but um, yeah. But it's that move I was trying to show with white playing here. Um, so if the if if the white stones are relatively strong, for instance, with a white stone down here, um, then this is a move that can actually work to reduce black's liberties to two. So now, when when this happens, there's no way for black to get three liberties, uh, because if black rolls in this direction, white gets a letter in this direction, or if black rolls in this direction, white gets a letter in this direction. If black connects in this direction, white squeezes from this side and then covers here. So whatever black does, black has only two liberties. So when it works, this is how it works. And it just wasn't work because white didn't have that stone at five. So whatever black does, black has only two liberties. And so the other variation where white plays the natural looking move and black gets to play this. This this is uh, the other Tesuji where black has played two hunters on the second line and has gained a third liberty, gained an, an extra liberty. And so sometimes this move is um, is the refutation of that. But white, um, as, as we saw, white needs a stronger position to the other side. So it has to be white has to be strong on the three third line th third line stones have to be strong on both sides for this to work. And it sometimes happens. And so if, if white if black had only two liberties here, then of course um, white would be winning the race to capture by two liberties, and it wouldn't be such a big deal. 
So that's what uh, Leonardo de Wagner was asking. And um, someone else was saying that fine art, James Sedgwick is saying that fine art did not like white R10, which is white's move here, which as I said, it's a big move as far as territory is concerned. Uh, when you compare it to, to this move, it's probably close to 10 points difference. Um, but it didn't like it because fine art obviously saw this move, which I did not see at the time. So that worked really well for black. Oh, yes. And so there must have been something in the corner um, that I wasn't seeing. So let's let's play with that. Let's say uh, black plays somewhere else and white plays here. And black plays here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if white does it this way, aha, uh -huh. it's not working. Well, this is not working for white. This would be a kind of a, oh, no, it's not a co, is it? Is it a kind of a co? This would be dangerous for black. No, it's not. White wins this one. I mean, black wins this one. Excuse me, a bit confused here. Okay. Yeah, but white would play here. Obviously. So so this 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 kind of co is something that could happen, could be dangerous for black. That's the most I can see. So we'll we'll wait for the computers to tell us about that. Um but black added a stone here. Um this is so it's a very solid move there. Um which looks like black is happy about the board position. It does take away the eyes of white's group in the center, so um it's already like it, the best white can do locally is to play here and black plays here. White has no eyes at all there. So the group in the center now is eyeless. And if black's two stones at uh, J7 and a, uh, K7, if those two stones escape, then it will be a, an issue for those white stones there. So I guess that's my best exp explanation of that connection. White played the big move there. Um, so at this point, Black has gained some territory on the right side by capturing those two white stones. And has added a stone to the upper right corner, so that corner, there's no way White can even squeeze that now. So that's close to 40 points in, in the upper right. Yeah, it's close to 40 points there. Black has a nice territory in the lower right there, and some territory on the in the upper left, in the left side. And so White... I think it's pretty clear that white cannot afford to play some kind of a defensive move there. In this case, black would actually probably play this extension that someone was um, someone was suggesting before. Rick Rubenstein is correcting our nomenclature. Okay. Yeah, the raccoon dog is drumming its belly. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll leave that one. The players tend to be just very focused. So as Telegraph go, do you think I do you think you could guess what kind of mood the players are in just by looking at the game? Maybe sometimes. Um But usually it's not a good idea to get be getting too emotional about it. So I think players at this level are pretty, they're pretty cool most of the time. Unless they've really messed up. Okay, so now black is continuing the attack in the center. So it's a real threat against white's group in the center now because it just doesn't have any eyes. So I'm, I'm talking about, I'm talking about this group here. 
Um, obviously, it's going to be alive if white adds a stone to capture the two stones. It's connected up. Um, and I, I like the timing of black's connection here, actually. Uh, black connecting here is sort of asking white, um, like, if this black group were about to die, white would probably play here and take away the eye from this black group. And it's something that white can do in some cases. But if white does it now, black's going to push through and it's just going to heat up the local fight. So like this would be, it wouldn't be accomplishing. Squeezing like this would be just making it easier for black. And white would have to go back to the second line. So uh, something like this, uh, at this time of the game, it's it's not, it's just not working yet. Um, so getting this exchange in um, before the black group gets into trouble, it gives black a potential eye there. So I sort of like the timing he played that. And now he's going on an attack because um, now the, the fight, is, it's going to be a pretty tough fight in the center of the board. And in some cases, there's going to be some kind of a trade where maybe that black group in the upper left is going to get into trouble. So playing that exchange there before he starts something in the center of the board, um, I think that was a good good time to do it. Exactly. Jack saying, I agree. He does step, still have a chance, but it is starting to look difficult for white when black has such a solid position in the lower right. That position there, the solidness of that position makes it look starting to look good for black. And let's see. So that's at least something like 10 points. White, black has 40 points in the upper right and some more territory. So black's going to end up with something like 60 points even sort of status quo and yeah so white's gonna have to keep the left side and it's still gonna be difficult so if white can keep the lower left area all of the other areas are solid territory for white so it, it depends on the lower left area and whether or not black gets uh something like 10 15 points on the left side or not so uh the white territory and the black territories on the side are going to be in the end they're going to be very important uh, for the time being the fight in the center um is urgent but after that assuming some kind of uh, result is obtained in the center of the board the next problem is going to be the left side and then it's going to be over yes bug kitten seen did win the first game um it went to something like 90 percent winning chance for young jingxing and he played one mistake to lose the game. <laughs> I haven't noticed. Ikichin says, have I been hearing complaints among professional Go players about the drastic price increase in computer components? Um... Well, you know, it's interesting when, um, when the idea of learning from AI started, people were buying these, um, expensive computers. Um, but, um, uh, after that, it turned out that, um, programs like Katago or, well, if we could have fine art, I'm sure fine art, it's true of fine art also. They don't really need that much uh, com computing power to to be better than human players. And there is a question of whether we really need perfect or close to perfect results from the computers when they're already better than us. Um, so like my computer on my, the, my Katago on my local computer, from my viewpoint, it's good enough for me. Um, so I actually, I think that there was a period when everyone was thinking about buying computers that cost thousands and thousands of dollars. 
Um, and then now they're not so keen on that. They, they don't really, they, fi they figured out that if they have a GPU on it, um, it's going to be good enough. So this, uh, this move that Black has just played, it's always forcing. And so if Black had played it earlier, then White would have been answering like this. But since black plays it at this timing, uh, maybe white's going to try to find a different... Oh, it looks like white didn't. So let's get back to the game. Oh yeah, so it's like this. White played that move, um, and black connected. So that's um, just locally, you can see that's sort of a, a painful shape for white when um, black is sort of pushing through there into the white territory. So like if black continues with moves like this, you can see the, the left side territory for white. It's sort of naturally deteriorating. And uh, something you have to think about is black's position, whether black is alive here. So this black group um, with a ponuki, it's actually a very solid shape because even if white uh, at some point plays here, sorry, here, uh, Black's still alive because um, at, the worst, at the worst case scenario, Black can still play here and White cannot take away this eye since it's a position where White cannot take away that eye. And so at the very least, Black will be able to make two eyes there. For the time being, Black is going to play more strongly. Um, obviously, Black's not going to answer like that when Black is already out in the center. So Black can continue attacking or Black can play away. In any case, Black is... Um, and then black is going to be alive there, locally. So that's important. So black can play a local move. Black can start attacking. Um, for instance, black could be thinking of attacking on this side. Um, would be also an option. Uh, or black could start thinking about territory. Oh, so, ah. After I say that, he plays. So this is just a big move as far as territory is concerned. And it's taking away white's eyes. Um, so... The one problem with that variation I was showing, uh, where black allows white, um, black allows white. So I have to sort of change course there. But when white does play here, there is the fact that white is going to start to get some eye space while forcing black to live. So that uh, that would be my, my expect explanation for that move. Again, he's playing a territorial move while sort of attacking white. He's just going for the territory. And the point is that if white tries to connect up here, black will still have ways to sort of threaten to break into the territory on the left while trying to attack white in the center. He's not going for an all-out attack. Like, I would be, at some point, I would probably be trying to kill one of these two white groups. But that's not the way uh, Shin Jin so does it. Okay, it's looking a bit difficult for Yang Ding Xing, I guess. Okay, so now White has... Where did White play before that? Oh, here. So White is trying to start something, but um, it's just that Black has a very solid position to the right. It's going to be difficult for White. White is looking at... Um, so Black played here. White is looking at a potential counterattack. So white would like to be able to do this at some point. Um, it's not as if white can capture all the black stones. So this would probably be a minor gain for white. It's not no not all that important. The three stones don't have anything to do with white's position on the outside. So that's not so. It's it's not so so big. Maybe white could try to capture this side. It sort of depends on what's happening on the left, I guess. So there's there's a slight potential there, but it's probably going to be difficult to make it work out. Otherwise, white is also thinking of, at some point, cutting off uh, these black stones. 
um, here. Like it, um, black is sort of connected outside also. So since black is strong on the right, um, I don't really see it being very successful for white, but white's just trying to keep in there with the territory, taking away some of that potential territory that black had in the center of the board. So white protected. Um, black still does have some forcing moves in the local area, so moves like this being forcing is, it reinforces black in the center. Black, if black gets worried about this group, black can play here and connect up with Sente. So black does have um, a lot of options. Black doesn't have to do that yet. Um, I would be thinking about a leaning attack on white's group on the lower side. So that, that would be what I would want to do. Um, and so I think really the question is um, whether Xin Jingxiu is going to be that adventurous because he seems to be trying to escape with a safe victory here, avoiding the complicated variations. And so it could be that he's not going to do this kind of thing. Like I, I would be thinking of doing stuff like this with the idea of sort of setting up some kind of a, an attack here. So, yeah. Actually, it looks like it. Um, like, this would probably be... Yeah, it's probably not advised. Like, like an extreme example would be something like this, where I'm, I'm trying to capture the whole uh, lower side. It's a bit dangerous. Um, so, I don't know if it'll go that far. Um, I would be still thinking, even if I wanted to play simply, I would be thinking about a variation, maybe something like this, where black could um, play some forcing moves from the center and also force here and get an attack anyway. Yeah, so I, I sort of like this one better. So I, I really wanted want to play this move. It's it's the active move or a move like this, for instance, which would be a kind of a direct attack on white center. Uh, and while I say that, I also get the feeling that maybe Xin Jin So is going to find a more kind of pacific way of finishing off this game because I, I do think Black has an elite at this point. Ninety two percent. Well, in the first game, Yan Ding Xing got to, um, I think it was probably something like ninety seven percent. And that uh, uh, reversals from that point, they do happen. In fact, they did happen just two days ago. Yeah, so. Um, I don't really know. I think Xin Jinzo is actually using a bit more. On, on the clock that I have here, um, let's see, what time is it? Uh, it's 2 o'clock. So they've been, uh, it's 2 o'clock in Japan, that is. So they've been playing for four hours, I believe, yes. They've been playing for four hours. And so they, yeah, so it makes sense. So the clock I have here says that Xin Jin So is on his last 43 minutes. So he has less than an hour. And Yang Ding Xing has one hour and 13 minutes. So that seems to be about right with their times adding up to about two hours. Um, when they started with three hours each, so they've used up four hours. So it makes, it, it calculates.
so this is where um, I'm not surprised to see um, I'm not surprised to see Shinjin so taking his time for this move um, because this is where people uh, mess up this, this is where the winning side can easily throw the game um, by just doing something careless and so it's a point where um, Shinjin so is the type of player who is um, done a lot of reversals from from the losing side he's been behind and he's very good at finding a way um, to turn it around uh, he knows how dangerous this this position is so so he's being careful um, so he's probably thinking about just not doing anything and uh, finishing with territory so like uh, to, to be very um, simply just doing it would be for instance um, something like this a very uh, not interesting move but it's a very solid move making more than 10 points for black on the left side um, I bet it's going to be good enough to win the game. So he, he's, he might even be thinking about a variation like this, which is going to be an end game. Um, but the move that you sort of want to play, like any player, any strong player will see moves like this and also see moves like this. So, so they're, they're, these are moves that black can be thinking about. Um, this is also a very direct attack on white's group in the center, very strong attack because white really can't afford to, to allow black to massacre that white stone on the side so white sort of has to move from the side it means that white's going to get into trouble in the center so this kind of attack um i think it has a high likelihood of being able to kill white in the lower right area um but it also there is also an outside up uh, possibility that Black's going to mess up and lose the game because of this attack. So he's, he's being very careful about it. Yes, uh, that's text hype. Yama versus Ichiriki. There was also a massive reversal. Um, it was a win for Yama, and he lost the game. Um, sort of makes me worried about the Nangshin Cup that's coming up. because um, Up to that point, Yama was playing so well, but in this game against Ichiriki, he was a bit shaky. So um, he was in very good form for the previous rounds of the Nanshin Cup. Um, but we'll, we'll have to see how well he does this time. Of course, he's playing against very formidable players. So yes, as long as says the safest move for black. I would say the safest move is something like this. And especially if you're Shin Jin So, he's really good at the end game. Um, he, there's really no, he doesn't have any weaknesses, so he can, he can make it a, uh, an end game and he'd still be able to take it to the end, um, without making any major mistakes in the end game. So this would be a safe way to do it. And this is the way that I would be tempted to do it. And they probably both work, but you know, so it's, you could say it's a kind of a style thing. C13. Uh, that area, um, C13. Well, you know, that's a worthwhile question. Would I ever consider trying to start with C13 to be more territorial? Um, you know, it's probably not out of the question, but um, in general, it's just, it's the smallest part of the board. It's not the size of the territory as much as the fact that white's completely alive in the corner. And so the reason that this move is actually fairly big is because in many cases it could have to do with the life or death of that black group in the upper left. And so that's what makes it a really big move when you compare it to white doing something like this, for instance, scooping out the side and taking away a part of black space. So like if it turns out something like this, um, black's not even locally alive. And if black really messes up, that Black, black group might not be able to safely connect up to the center and it could get very dangerous. So the fact that this point uh, is potentially um, changing the life of or death of the black group makes it a pretty big move. 
And so the next uh, question is, why was I talking about doing this and just ignoring that group? That's because if black captures white on the lower side, um, I think it's going to be bigger than white cap, even if white managed to capture that black group in the upper left. I think the white group, capturing the white group is bigger. Um, there's just a lot of empty space attached to the white group. It's probably um, not such a big difference. So maybe it's a bad idea, but like it, it depends on the scale of which the groups die. So for instance, if we have something like this uh, happen, black can, white cannot capture that black stone. And if we have something like this happen, well, that black group is probably not even going to die. But um, in this case, black's getting... something like 50 points by capturing this white group. In some cases, black could even afford to sacrifice the group on, in the upper left. Or probably going to get a core or something at least. In this position, black's probably going to just live with this move. So it depends on factors like that. Um, but it is, if we consider the fact that black's probably winning however he plays, or at least has potential to win a win winnable position, this whole thing is probably too much of an adventure for a top pro to be going on. And so he's trying to find a safe path towards the end of the game, which is, it can be a pretty com uh, complicated idea to, to, to win without um, getting into trouble. And Bug Kitten is asking, is KJ still the Chinese number one these days? Or... Um, I think Yang Jingxing, he's, um, he wasn't really conspicuous for a while, but he is pretty steady and he's uh, doing well in the international tournaments. Um, KJ, he's, he's been a bit quiet recently. Yeah, so, so I'm agreeing with the chat I'm seeing here on Twitch, all of you, so Whiskers also. Um, I think he's probably ranked number one still, but... Um, there's there's a number of strong Chinese players. It's it's really difficult to stay on the top. Yes. Um, I'm thinking of it. I was just... Um, so, yes. 
Being asking, uh, Rick is asking, do I have a tea break coming up soon? Might be a good idea. Um, I'm sort of having the feeling that the next move is going to decide the um, the course of the game uh, towards the end game. So black can try to decisively sort of destroy white here, which would be maybe the more dangerous but more spectacular way to try to win the game. Or maybe black's going to just go into an end game, which is not going to be so exciting, uh, but probably the more safe way of dealing with it. Okay, so I think I'll take a break. Um, this time, let's... I'll make it tentatively 30 minutes, and I'll come back early if um, if things get hot on the game. So, yeah, let, let's say that that happened. So, yes, so um, I'll be back in half an hour. Or if it uh, gets really, really exciting in the game, you can expect me to be back earlier. So I'll take my second break now. Thanks for everyone for staying um, probably late night for some of you. But yeah, um, I'll be back then.
Okay, hello everyone. So, um... So, does the sound okay? I guess it's okay. Um, so I'll start up again. So, in my previous, uh... Commentary, we got this, uh, this far. Yeah, somewhere around here. And I was saying that Black had a choice here. So Black can have could have done the all-out attack with something like this, for instance, which is a fe feasible move. Or Black could have just played very defensively. This is probably good enough to win the game. And Black took the middle route, which is this one. Um, and White played straight down. So this example that I was giving with White playing like this, was a very simplified way of showing it, and it was giving Black both a squeeze and also a t an attack in the center. So this would be just um, just too easy. <coughs> Black was, was having enough territory as well as an attack in the center. So this would be too easy for Black. And instead, White went straight down. So this is a this is a move. It's a shape move which is making me I of two points. So in the game, Black saved this side, which gave White the opportunity to break through on that side. Or the normal move for Black would be to play here. Um, probably play this one again. And White's in trouble. Or if White plays here, Black can... Uh, in this case, Black gets a good shape towards the center. Is very thick. Um, still has a forcing move here. Um... And this is probably a safe win. So this is still kind of the safe way that Black could have done it. And in the game, he's doing a very strong variation. One thing that bothers me is that he, if he was going to do that, it's conceivable that he could have tried playing moves like this first. And just, if this happens... Well, it's actually probably going to answer on this thing. But just to give some extra strength um, to, to the center before doing that. Because this is the wildest variation. And Shinjin So didn't really need to go this far. So this is getting exciting. Okay, fine art preferred the, the move that what I called the normal move. So that's probably um, what James Sedgwick is talking about here is probably... Probably this one, um, which I think I was calling this the normal move. Thank you, Wee Gu King, uh, checking the sound for me. So in this case, uh, White does have potentially a forcing move at this point, which is, he's not going to use it yet. So this would be answered here. So it's going to change the position on the on the left there. Um, but White does have that potential force, uh, forcing move. And so all these black stones in the center, they... I'm not sure if they're connected. They seem to be in a kind of a volatile situation there. So it, um, it'll be interesting to see if White can find anything here. White seems to have a lot of time on the clock, close to an hour. And so... Um, this is basically White's last chance to mix it up and make something out of it. So trying to cut black somehow in the center. Um, oh, he did play them. Yeah, I was going to suggest that move. And so... For instance, if black already had a stone at this point, then it would be relatively difficult for white to cut this off because uh, basically black this this is has to be considered to be a forcing move also. So if we assume that one and two is forcing, uh, black is perfectly okay, but maybe there's not any time to play it anymore because white would push through on this side. Or white will push through and cut here. So I, I don't really know what's going to happen with this. Hmm. Yes. Well, computer programs 
uh, James Sedgwick was remarking that white's win rate jumped from 8% to 24%. So it's still bad for white. Um, and one thing about computer programs is that they, um, they always prefer the end game to a final decisive fight like this. They, they, they unless if they're winning, if they think that in this case, white, uh, I mean, black was winning. If they're winning, then they will prefer to take the end game route, even if it uh, ends up being fairly close. Um, so like it could be in this case, it's, um, I think black was several points ahead, but even if it was something like a half point or one and a half points, that would be a position in which a human professional would not be so sure of the win in an end game, but the computer would still want to play the end game variation. If it was a choice of a decisive fight in the center with a, looks like this one's going to be a semi race to capture. Um, the computer will prefer that the, the end game to, to even if it's going to end in something like 10 moves, whereas some human players will prefer to, to finish it off in a spectacular fight. Go Dave 89 is saying good morning. So it's good morning for some people. I think we might be, uh, might be morning, a fairly good time. It's still very early, I think in Europe, but yeah. In Europe, yes, it, it could be the morning. So early morning, maybe. Yes, Black did have a chance to choose to play a, I think like, for instance, um, I, I would play it probably, let's see, let's get rid of that. Uh, okay. Sorry, I was out of the game variation. So, um, if black is going to do this, even now, I think black can still play the forcing move in the center. This is maybe somewhere around here would be the last chance for black to do that. Where the center would still be capturing this white group in the center would still be bigger than anything else. But as the fight heats up here, it's going to be too late. So white played there. Well, that curled around. So that's making one of the connections. And you see black... Um, so black didn't play the local move. So if black had played here and white had played here, this this is starting to look like a very dangerous race to capture in which um, there's no way this black group in the center is going to beat white's group on the lower side. In some cases, maybe black's going to be able to beat the white group in the center here. So that, that would be black what black would attempt to do, and it would be a very close... Uh, seven would be probably a one move difference, one way or the other. So he's not going for that. Very, he's trying to extend his liberties a bit before he gets into that variation. So black is still looking at uh, variations like that. So for instance, um, variations similar to this one. So where he's uh, trying to capture white's group in the center, uh, variation like this. Or otherwise, um, let's see, what else could black do? Black could maybe um, still try this move. So yeah, I, I guess actually could be stuff like this. No, I'm probably getting confused. The real question is, where is white going to play it after this move? It's still very difficult to choose. Um, because um, in actuality, I think if white plays this move, it's probably going to be possible for black to link up to the black group here. So let's see. Could black maybe just extend? So black's trying to improve this group a little bit before taking out white center. So black's final object, you might say, would be, um, it would still be this variation where black is trying to cut white off in the center. Yes. So he's just trying to improve the actual process of doing that.
So this is a point where I guess White has a choice too. White can um, try to find a good move on the left side that continues an attack here. So, for instance, something like this. Or White can take this opportunity to push through here, which looks like it's a kind of an escape in the center. And we don't really know what's going to happen on the left side of the board. So I think that's White's choice, one of those one of those two. One of those two directions pushing through here. Or playing some oh, white pushed through here, okay. Okay, so now it's all going to happen on the left side now. Black Black's group in the center is still cut off. How to respond to R3? Okay, that's a good question. Bug kitten. It's not as if um, nothing is happening, but let's let's try that. If white plays here. Oh, sorry. Okay, let's have black play some random move. And say black plays here. Um, before white can push through on the third line, white has to find a way to capture the black stone. So obviously this is not working. Uh, trying a co-like situation is just not going to work because white doesn't have room for two eyes. And playing on this side... It still doesn't work because this is an Atari and white can, and black control. And so basically, black's move at um, at Q Q six here um, took away all of the potential there. And black's pretty strong on the left too, so there's not much chance of white getting some kind of a, for instance, with something like this, white might hope to get some kind of a race to capture, but. Um, Actually, black is already alive there, so it, it, it it's going to take a lot of, like, endgame moves like this could eventually have something to do with. Right? It still will, will, it'll take a long time for white to get anything that works. So at the best, white can, in some cases, if black leaves it for a while, maybe white will eventually get a race to capture. Okay, so let's uh, now we have to think about <clears throat> right. I agree with you, Stephen Kaisip. He went for the whole white group. It's not. I don't think it's really working. But like, if Black can find a good move on the left side now, uh, I was trying this one. Maybe something like that. Something like this. Um, Giving the whole left side territory to white with something like this, I, it's pretty clear to me, it seems clear to me that black is losing points here. It's, um, giving white a territory on the left, black's territory is gone. Uh, black did reduce white's territory to a certain degree, but I think black's on the whole black is losing points here. Um, probably a dangerous... So hello everyone. Um, did I get disconnected there for a moment? Am I back now? I don't see. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's good. Well, I hope I'm okay now. So is the... Um, 
Is the video okay? Is the visual okay? Okay, well, thank you. I don't know what happened there. Uh, let's get back to the game situation. So white is pushed through. White, black would like to find a good move on the left side. So uh, I was trying this one. Or this one. Hmm. Seems very unclear whether this is going to work for black, though. I, I would be very worried at this point. Okay, looks like I'm good now. Yes. So, and it looks like uh, Shin Jin So has about 26 minutes left on his clock. So he's he's probably going to run out of time at this point. It's, it's a complicated situation. Let's just go back and take a look at, yeah, the, I think really we should go back to this point and say, yeah, if black plays here, this variation looks so much better. Um, maybe just here. Yeah, white has 50 so points. Yeah, black, black, uh, this would be a win for black. I don't really know how much. It looks like a safe win for black. And he played this, this is a wild variation. Yeah, if, if black was going to do this, I think definitely black wanted to have this uh, somewhere around. Even now, I think I would be thinking of playing this exchange. I think it's still going to be in time. So like if white does something like this and black does this, black will be able to capture that white group in the center. So that's something like 40 points there. And I strongly doubt that white would be able to kill the, the black group here. So like something like this would be white's strongest attack. Black would still have this forcing move. And like it's it's gonna be very easy for black to live here. Like even if black just um plays something like this or something like this. Or something like this. Um should be no problem for black to live. So this it would be safe for black to play one now. And if white answers it. This just makes a huge difference in the game variation. So if white does this. And then black can, well, maybe push once here, but black's connected all over. And so simple and so easy for black. It would be much better. So black should have done it this way. Um, I don't really understand what kind of an oversight this was, but it looks like uh, Shin Jin So has made a mistake here. Maybe he just forgot to play that move. Okay, so white pushed through here. And black has played here. So there's uh, still an exciting... White does have to capture those two black stones. I, I'd say connecting those two black stones, not only would it uh, be an attack against all of white stones in the center, um, it, it would also really strengthen black's group. So I would probably expect white to push through here. 
at least once. If black captures the whole center, the center would be bigger. So that's Leonardo de Wagner. It depends, it depends, of course, on, on how it happens. But the center is almost always bigger than that black group in the upper left. Exactly. In Twitch, we're talking about the game being, it's live, and it's also, um, they're playing on computers, because they are, um, they're, they don't, are not traveling to each other's countries. Okay, let's see if the real game is moving. So yeah, Black is played here. I would want to capture the two stones, or, or White could play a big move on the left side, which would be, um, this one. Yes, travel is still very difficult in Asia, in Eastern Asia. Thanks everyone for your kind comments. Yeah, this board position, I just don't know how this is going to turn out. Like, I would expect Black to answer with a move here. Mm. And I I just don't know what's going to happen to this white group in the center. It doesn't really have any eyes yet. And Black's groups aren't very strong either. So there's it, this is going to be a pretty wild fight still. Black didn't have to do this. Okay, so this is the okay, it's similar to the game varies. So white extended and black connected. So there's is some added security for this black group in the center when black connects here. Just because um because black can force against those white three stones next to it. So black does have some some moves there locally and, and some space now where black can potentially make an eye or so hmm yeah well the left side I, i'm not sure exactly how black would have followed up in, on the left um but the left side is pretty volatile also. I don't really know uh, something like this. Uh, this might be the idea that Black has. So it's a hard call to say whether White should answer by capturing the two stones or White should have played on the left. I, I don't really know. So Tanjay is asking about the NAGF, uh, the pro exam uh north american go federation that is so that's uh they were planning to have a pro exam it looks like uh still difficult um because of because of travel being well it's, it's sort of difficult in north america also it's like crossing country borders is a different difficult thing to do And North America does include some other countries. It's not just America. Okay, so with this move, White has... Has White? White's sort of connected. So this is... <laughs> it's sort of in between connecting and not connecting. So uh, what I'm saying here is that if Black plays here and here, looks like Black can cut this White group off. 
um, but at the cost of falling apart on the left. So um, this would potentially be some kind of a trade, uh, but it does look dangerous for white. So yeah, well, it looks dangerous for both sides, I should say. Another thing that white is thinking about with this move is that there's uh, this attack, which will take away a good part of black's eye space. So there's this attack that's happening here, and the whole black group, we have to worry about whether it's going to be alive or not. Yeah, so I guess... Um, <laughs> shorting is connection, yes. Uh, is that G hard or soft? I don't know. Um, yeah, I like the cats. So it's sort of a connection. It's It's one step closer to being connected. And the left side, white's going to be okay on the left side. So in a pinch, white can save those the left side group by connecting. So if we assume black plays a lot of moves on the left here, so uh, something like this, and maybe something like this, to, to try to kill the white group. Um, and then white will be able to play here and connect up on the second line. So it's not as if that white group is uh, going to be easy for black to kill. And it's very difficult, actually. And so uh, black has to keep this uh, black group in the lower right happy also. Obviously, um, allowing white to take away these stones in the center would be painful. Um, and the counter play that white black does have is is that variation I was showing you. It's not really a hundred percent connected here. So there there is the fact that um, white has to worry about this threat that black has. So yeah, this is getting exciting and complicated. For the time being, that black group in the center, it still looks a bit weak. Maybe one more move. And then we get to see what happens when white plays here, though. Maybe something like this. This looks, oh no, it's, it's not quite working, is it? White can capture the four black stones in this variation. Or the two stones. One or the, well, maybe white can just connect here and capture the four stones. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, if uh, black goes for this variation, uh, now black has to worry about this very loose connection that black has. So if black does something like this, um, it's not really connected in the center. Or if black does something like this, it's not even really alive. So in this variation, black has half an eye on, this, on the bottom here. Oh, black has an eye there. So black will be able to live. Sorry about that. So that was uh, that was my mistake. White probably has to play something more. That that point at um, this move was actually a pretty important point that made eyes on both sides. So white can pull back, and it, it's not alive. So black has various weaknesses to deal with here, and it's a problem. So black really wants to go with this variation, if black can capture white stones in the center. But like I was showing you, it's, it's not so simple. Maybe black can do it this way. 
in which case black would have this. So white's going to play here first. But still, th this would be working better for black because um, because this would be working on this side. So, yeah, it's I'm just trying to show the issues that the players have to deal with here. Okay, black's playing a forcing move on the left. Um, so locally, just locally, this is threatening to cut on the third line. So if white answers here, black's going to get really good shape with this. And like I told you, white can always connect up on the second line with this move that's a peep. If white were to play here, there would be at least a co. But if white peeps here, white gets to either connect on the second line or capture this one stone, which connects to the center. Um, so locally, this is what black is trying to do. Um, I'm not so sure about that black group in the center when white does stuff like this. Hmm, looks so dangerous for, for black. If black plays here and white uh, does this thing, and then black plays here, then white plays here. Okay. And then black plays here. I'm oh, sorry. And then finally cuts here. So this is, um, yeah, sort of working for black. In this variation, it looks like it's working for black. Yeah, this is even better. So black just connects up to the center. Um, yeah, and, and would capture these stones now. So this is, um, or black could even play on this side. Yeah, yeah, it's getting better. Let's see, do I really want to do that? Maybe black's going to be able to kill everything here. White doesn't have any eyes. So this would be working for black. So the whole idea here is that if black gets a stone at four and white cuts at five and seven, there is some danger for white in the center here, provided black black's group in the center on the left there is alive. Okay, let's get back to the board position. Leonardo is asking how much of this is actually happening on the board. Probably not very much of it. Okay, so black has peeped here. And so locally, if black... If black cuts on the third line, then this will capture these two white stones. Even if white does stuff like this, there's no way for these two stones to be connecting up on the side here it's just even if we say that white can fight a co here there's always the pushing from behind that black can do so for if black cuts there black's going to capture those stones and these white stones are connected to black's group in the center too so they're uh cutting stones so that's why i'm sort of assuming white's going to play here and black does need to reinforce the center here and so if we say white plays some uh, very safe move like this. And uh, yeah, this, this is actually pretty effective. Um, oh, that would be the same thing, basically. So let's say that this all settles down. Um, what I was trying to say is that it looks like white cannot capture these black stones on the right because black can counter with this uh, and this and this for you. Yeah, this for you. Well, maybe white's going to play here. Black has to answer locally because white can capture like this. Uh, but if black answers locally, this is still setting up this forcing move with this. Yeah, this is, this is going to be bad for white. It's not turning out very well. Everything is going to die. Yeah. 
So it looks like white cannot cut at 13 and 15. So if we go back to that point and say that white is not going to be able to cut, but has to uh, add another stone in the center, and black can play here. Then we go back to an end game. Okay, so yeah, so much for the 20 move variations. Let's get back. Okay, white pushed through there. Okay, so it's sort of looking like the variation I was making, but it, uh, black didn't sacrifice those stones in the center. So white played here, black played here. So locally black is setting up, locally black was setting up this continuation where black plays here and get some territory on the side while forcing white to connect up like this. So that's what's happening on the left side there. And white's, white's hope basically is this attack here where um, white sort of needs a bit more, I think, to, to win the game. So if we're assuming this position in the, in the, on the left side here, it turns out black hasn't really lost that much territory. So. In fact, black is probably gaining territory um, on the left side here where the, the white side area has disappeared and black still has a good part of the black side area. So if we just look at the left side of the board, um, it turns out this was not so bad for black. So the question is whether white can make this move work. And I was suggesting this variation and I thought black could capture some stones with this. So maybe even maybe even like this. So so this would be another way to do it. And yes, so black does have some Dummies Murray there. But it's not fatal. Maybe white can live inside though. Yeah, so that that would that would be a, a completely different question. And maybe white can make two eyes. Hmm, it doesn't really look like that's working for white, though. Um, so let's go back. In the game, black actually answered on this side. So when black does this and allows white to capture the one stone here, as I said, there's a lot of weaknesses in this black group. Black has to, for instance, if black plays underneath, it's not connected here. Black has to be careful of all these weaknesses. So how is black, the question is how is black going to handle that? So if black plays here and it's like this, locally this is not alive. And white is not secure position either. So white still has to worry about this cut here. So that might be the final, um, the final attack that black has ready. So white has just taken the one stone. So this is the board position. And so I was showing black playing here. And that's because this is a secure connection. Um, otherwise, this is a shape move. And it doesn't really look like it's connected to me. Um, there is a weakness here. With which white could actually cut the black group off. Or cut it on this side. Or if black plays here, um, probably not so good for black, actually. Even if white plays like this, I don't see any... Um, black is very short on eye space. Of course, there's the race to capture here. Maybe black can capture the white stones in the center. So if we assume white plays here and black plays here... Hmm... Or maybe even here. Starting to look like it might be a living shape. And yes, still we have to worry about the, the eyes of all of these white stones in the center.
Okay, the clocks on my the server I'm looking at says it says that Black has Shinjinso has 15 minutes and Yang Dingxing has 30 about 34 minutes. White still has to worry about the ice base of the whole thing here. So that's going to be an issue. There's a lot of groups. That black group on the upper left, it, it's not completely settled yet, but it's probably going to be okay. So yeah, there's still a lot of things that sort of bother me here. So black played the Takefu. And like I said, it's not really connected. So for instance, one example of white cutting it, which is not really relevant to this board position, is that white could play here and cut here. And black would not be able to capture the stone at five without a ko. This would be a ko. Um, but actually... This is probably not working for white because uh, black can play, black can play here, and um, like this, like this, and even though white captures some stones in the lower right, that white group in the center is pretty hopeless, and black has two eyes, of course. So. Yeah, so it's not connected, but uh, that way would giving black eyes in the center would be bad. So uh, moves like this is what I was thinking about. So it's going to be a, a potentially it's going to be a semi eye a race to capture between this black group here and um, the white group in the center. So for instance, just to put it on the board, something like this or something like this is how black would cut white off. Or maybe even this way. This looks like black's going to win here. So black, uh, in this case, white has um, three outside liberties. And black has seven outside liberties. These two liberties are sort of filled up. Oh, but white has a snap back here, so black has to be careful, doesn't he? So black couldn't do it that way. Uh, so here, 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 or here. It's not working for white. So yeah, so yeah, this variation would be a way that black could potentially cut white off. And like I was saying, the semi, the race to capture, it looks like it's going to be good for black. So black has seven outside liberties, um, and an outside liberty here too, so something like eight. And we could we could imagine that this position is like this. So black still has eight liberties on the outside, and white has something like a total of only four. So this is an easy win for black. Which means that, oh, where did white play? Okay, so white had to answer this move. Well, I was expecting white to play something like this, and this would be a connected shape. Um, but then black would connect on the side. Maybe even play here first. And there remains the issue of the fact that white might have trouble making two eyes here. The whole white group. So black is not gaining any territory, definitely. Black is probably losing territory on the whole. A very flimsy shape on the lower side. If white pushes through here and cuts, looks like white black's gonna have to sacrifice some stones on the on the right. But it's it, that's not an issue. Black can just play here. The fact that white's group in the center of the board is not alive is is the real problem. So white instead of playing that move, white pushed through here. Still looks like white is actually having trouble getting a good connection here. So if white cuts, black will extend. And in this case, black will capture the white stones on the on the right. And it doesn't really matter what happens what with this move. Um, white only gets some of the black stones anyway. So black's gonna if black can capture this white group in the center, that's a win for black. So if white plays on, on the other side, something like uh, maybe here, this would be a way for white to connect up in the center. It looks like it's it's still sort of weak 
on iSpace. So maybe something like this. Uh, yeah, I think this is this is the uh, whatever I say. I, I think that's the way White has to play. White has to play. Um, so it's either this move or this move to connect up in the center. This looks like White's best bet with a potential semi with the black group in the lower right, or a potential semi with the black group in the upper left. One of those two. Okay, One Dragon is saying, can you talk about seven? And I, um, I'm not sure which variation it was, the seven in which variation. So can you give a um, coordinates maybe? Okay, so yes. So this is the game variation here where white pushed through and black connected. Okay, so white connected like this. Uh, looks uh, looks sort of juicy for black to push through here, but I don't know. Black can either push through here, or black can play the honey here and connect. So black has a choice of one of those two. Uh, maybe, so this, this would also be a, a possibility. Black does have some extra security with a, a kind of a move here, which might capture a white stone there. Yeah, it looks like it's capturing a white stone there. Maybe an extra eye there. Hmm. Still doesn't really look alive. So like if we say black plays on this side, or something like this. Oh, this one was alive. Okay. So White still has to be careful about that and play something like this. <clears throat> In which case, maybe Black can go after this stone. Looks like it's alive. Okay. So this is, okay, we're, let's just follow the game now. I'm probably getting lost in my variations. Okay, so black does have, okay, black added a stone there. So black's group in the lower right is is very much alive now. White has no way of making two eyes, I think. Like, white has no eyes at all in the center of the board. And seems to have a, a potential eye somewhere around here. So white could do it, like, with this kind of move. Um, white has various ways to start making an eye here in the center. So white's... Black has defended the lower right area. So white's only option now is to try to find a way to attack black in the upper left. So let's assume this variation, uh, maybe this, and pushing through here. White does have to be careful of those three stones on the right, so maybe not the peep here. Maybe this. I'm just sort of doubtful about that. And the Damizmari there looks uh, pretty bad for white. Looks like black should have a way to deal with this. But it could eventually become a race to capture between these two groups. So like if we play here though, white doesn't really have a good way to cut this. Uh, because if white plays here and here, this is... Oh, it, uh, that was good. Okay, sorry about that. Black has to be a bit more clever. So here, here. Oh, so that worked. That was working. Okay, 
So maybe here. Hmm. This one looks a lot better. So if white pushes through here. Um, basically the fact that this point is forcing for black. So black will play here. Hmm. Confusingly not working. Hmm. So yeah, in this variation, it wasn't quite working for black because white can play the target here. Maybe like this. Yeah, this this one works. Okay, took me a moment to see that. Okay. Okay, good night, Leonardo de Wagner. It was a late night, I'm sure. Okay, so if, if white pushes through here, black can extend at six, which is forcing on the right, and then make a, a bamboo joint here. So that was a clean connection. So white does need to find a way to cut black off here, but that was not working. So just to show it again, black plays the attachment here. Or if white peeps first, this is bad because white's filled his own liberty here. And so it's it's not really working. So like even if black just does it this way. And so if white pushes through and cuts, then black's move here is the Tesuji. And it looks like it's connected. Just because let's see, if white pushes here, it's this move. If white attaches here, <clears throat> Okay, something like that. But this is not really working for white because black has this move and can cut here to capture the cutting stones. So that wasn't working for white. Yeah, so it looks like black's connected with this move and basically it can extend here or can extend here to have a connected shape. Yeah, it looked like uh, Shinji So had an easy win, but it's it's really complicated here. So if white cannot cut black effectively, uh, the next choice that white would have to choose from is to, to play something like this and take away black's eyes. So the idea would be to play moves like this, take away black's eyes with a move like this, and try to make it a race to capture. And if white can take away black's eye space cleanly, it does look like white has potential to be able to win this race to capture against the black group on, in the upper left. So that would be the final fight there. Okay, so Yan Dingxing has uh, something like 24 minutes left, so he's used up a lot of his time. But this is going to be a final decisive fight. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree with A. Song saying he doubts that the players are sure of the liberties of these groups. Um, it, it looks like white has more liberties. So if white can succeed in taking away the eye space of the... Oh yeah, so white did play the honey there. Uh, so this is threatening to cut black off at the same time as trying to take away white black's eye space. And so if black answers it with something 
local. And we get to a position like this where white is secure enough in the center. Uh, then white would be able to play here. And looks like white's going to win this race to capture. So maybe we'll have a third game after all. Okay, so black pushed through. What's happening with this one? So the safe move would be to cover here. Well, white can cover in two directions, but let's have white cover here and here. Hmm, doesn't seem to be working for black. This would be a double Atari. And this would be connected. Or white could just take the five cents. Starting to look bad for black. I think Black just got into trouble here. I mean, in this race to capture, I don't really see Black winning. So let's just follow the game now. And so those extra liberties White has towards the lower side. So it looks like maybe Shinjin so returned the returned the mistake. Um, and has given Yan Dingxing a second chance. Black cannot continue here, so Black will have to make the connection now. So, for instance, if Black does, if Black does something like this, why can even uh, cut off the black stones with this. And so it's clearly not not successful for black. So black probably has to back off to this side. And white is connected sort of as it stands. So white could play on this side. And it's bad for black. So, um, just remember that um, if Yang Jinxing does win this game, I will be um, trying again tomorrow with a stream for tomorrow. <laughs> I just can't see how black could hope to win this semi. It looks hopeless to me. Mm hmm So he's covered there. We'll just have to see. <clears throat> and white's all connected in the center there, so white can take away black's eyes. I don't see black winning this.
He has performed magic before. Yes. No way I can deny that. F6. Hmm. Okay. I can try to work that one. F6 would be white playing, black playing here. Yeah, it's not working. In fact, it's already, yeah, well, white would, I guess white would just connect. And black needs to play, black needs to play something anyway, yeah. Conceivably would be better for white, for black. White does need to stop black from playing this move. So black can get to this point. It's still not going to be alive. Conceivably better for, for black, for white, for black, sorry. <laughs> better for black. Actually, Rick Rubenstein's move might be better than the game move. Hmm. Okay, so black took a stone there. White has to answer it somehow. And so probably we'll just connect the two stones. So it's shaping up into a semi-I. I think black has about probably um actually if we if we look at so just to I'll make a diagram here to make an um a guess about how many liberties black has. So it's um where did white play? Oh white pushed through there? Filling his own liberty. Okay, let's let's just leave it at the game. I don't understand what's happening with this move. White probably has liberties to spare, but I don't understand why he would fill his own. Uh, maybe he has something happening here. I don't understand why white filled that liberty. It doesn't seem to be doing anything. Like I said, um, <laughs> semi-eyes, you fill your opponent's liberties, not your own. I've said that before. Oh, he's filling his own liberties again. Maybe he's trying to make two eyes. I suggest push my semi video once more. It's like, why why do you fill your own liberties in semi-eyes? I made a video about semi-eyes. Where is it? I made two videos about semi-eyes. But uh, this is the basic one. For those of you who wonder how they work, this this is just one of the one of the basic videos about how to win a semi-eye. And it is definitely not that you fill your own liberties. That's that's what you don't do. Okay, so if we look at the local situation here, white can throw in here. White's usually going to have this opportunity to fill black's liberties. And for the time being, black has two liberties there, two liberties here. So it's four liberties, seven liberties, about eight outside liberties. And if we assume something like this, happening there's no inside liberties at all so if it's if we have a shape like this for instance so that's eight liberties for black and they don't really look like they're gonna increase so uh white just filled to his own liberties but um yeah white also has like just in the center here um there's there's this one this one 
this one. Three, four, five. White already has about eight liberties there. It looks like white's going to win by a small margin. Black's sort of wishing he'd played this earlier. Then it would be maybe possible to fill liberties from that side. But without that, it looks difficult to. I think white's winning this semi. Okay. Um, Remy Campagne. Am I pronouncing that anything close to correct? Um, it was talking about this co, I believe. So this is maybe Black's last chance to make something out of this. With a co that does, it does threaten eventually to capture three white stones. And ultimately it could threaten the life or death of the white group. So this is a pretty powerful co if Black has enough co threats to win it. Okay. So the question is, is white going to play the co or is white, if white backs off, uh, white's not alive anyway. So maybe it's going to turn into a semi between this black group and the white group in the, on the upper side, on the top. I think Yan Dingxin needed to see that video yesterday. Yeah, it's too late to send him the link. It is not a double call. Okay, White's backed off once. But uh, still, Black can try to win this one. Uh, I mean, Black can try to take away White's eye space with a move here. So that's that's the next thing we have to figure out. Now, in this race to capture, it could be that, um, well, locally white has to play the co, but if white does something like this, it could be that black doesn't have enough liberties to win this. So white has, white has a few outside liberties. Oh, yeah, this is so confusing. At some point, black could have played this move. Let's, let's just assume black had played that earlier. Okay, this is not, not a very exact way of filling the liberties, but this is an example of an eye against a non-eye situation where black is going to have to fill all of those inside liberties eventually. So actually, I did a, vid a video about how the, the group with the eye wins. And that, that was actually, I think it, I talked about this in the link I um, just gave you guys. When, the, when one side has an eye and the other side does not have an eye, all of the inside liberties belong to the side with an eye. So this is an example of how this is going to work for white. So the idea is that if black takes away white's second eye here, white can play here and it's going to be an eye against no eye and white's going to win the race to capture. And black can get a desperate call by playing this way. It's going to be a lot of co threats black has to, has to have a huge advantage in co threats, probably. So yeah, black played here. Now black's trying to make the one eye, which would make this a close thing. So for instance, if white plays on this side and black plays on this side. Now, um, if white doesn't do anything here, this is going to be an eye for black with an eye for white. Uh, maybe this one. And, um, or, or even maybe this one. It's, it's probably about the same. In this case, um, it looks more like a seki. And seki in this case would probably be a win for black like just the move at two it's a huge move as far as end game is concerned black has taken away the upper left corner territory from white on the whole black didn't lose too much in this whole fight and white's group in the center still has to live okay now i'm really confused white played an atari here that seems pretty irrelevant but it could be that white's going to win the co next move
Okay, so, um, Black has two ways to handle this. Um, and I don't know which one is going to work or which is better. So, Black can play, if Black plays this way, then there's no way for White to make two eyes, and White will have to play the, in this case, this variation is actually going to be probably dangerous for White because Black has some extra liberties. Um, a white group, and the best white can get is a Seki. So this is uh, a position where I would say it's starting to look good for black. And so white will have to cut here, and it's going to be this ko. So black has to win the ko. This one I'm not so sure of. It looks like maybe white's going to win the ko. So that that's one, one path where it's going to be this final ko to decide the game. And the other way for black to go is to, to protect this side and again, if white plays something on the outside, then black can play here. And it's the same situation I was talking about before, which means that white has to play something on, on this side. So now white's alive. And black is not alive, but black is going to have an advantage in the race to capture. So black will... Uh, let's see, black has an eye and white doesn't have any eyes, so maybe black's going to do it this way. Uh, white's, white can make a second eye, but it's going to take some work. And now this white group on the left side is in trouble too, so that's another problem. Yeah, this is starting to look bad for white again. So let's say white does something like this, and black does this, threatening to live, and black does this. Ah, now we have a white dead group on the left side too. This is a race to capture that black is going to win. That means that white has to answer somewhere around here. And black gets to do stuff like this, which will take away white's second die. Which means all of these, say something like this, all of these inside liberties, now they belong to black. So I bet this is going to be a win for black. Let's just fill some liberties just to sort of demonstrate that. Did I do that wrong? Yeah, it's probably better for black just to start filling from the sun. And I say black didn't forget to play this move. Probably not an exact way of filling the loose here. Um, so just bear with me. Assume, assume that I'm pretty close to being correct. So at this point, we can see a lot of white's outside liberties have been filled. Um, and let's just say that maybe white's going to get this forcing. Now white has to fill the inside liberty. So it's, it's sort of, it's the same theme here where the inside liberties belong to the side who has an eye. Um, and so white starts to fill the inside liberties and it's pretty hopeless because white um, white, white, white will never be able to put black in a tar. So like um, something like this. So white's already sort of lived. this was actually only one move difference with that co-attached at the in the upper left corner. So it was close, but um, it's another example of how all of the inside liberties belong to the side with an eye. Oh, so this was a case where I'm pretty sure that I was correct in saying. Now what are oh wow this is they're they're not on course really so if black had played this one this would have been a win for black because uh, white had to play here and then black would be able to to win either kill white on the left side or kill white in the center but it was pretty close and I was sort of um, random about the way I was feeling liberties but it it was good enough to be I wasn't completely off track there I think it was good enough to be true. So black connected here. Oh. And then played here. Black could still have done this one. I mean, black could still have done this one. And would still have a situation where black can live there. 
So white would have had to answer that. So if black had played here, that's a lie. Is living not good enough? I'm getting confused. Let's just look at the game. <laughs> okay, so black went after the white group and is going to fight a call here with this culture. Yes, I can see that happening. Um, and white's going to answer this culture. So white's going to answer that. Um, white's going to answer that, but white also has a culture in the center. White also has a code threat um, at G7. So that's a pretty big code threat. Yeah, so white threw in there. Okay, so where should Black's co threat be? Um, Black has a co threat at the Tengen point, or maybe an Atari against two stones on, on the left there. So those are the two co threats that I see for Black. Okay, I think both players are probably, at least Shinji So is close to or into his overtime fairly soon. And it's uh, five sets of 46 sets. Uh, we, 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 Wu King, uh, am I pronouncing that close to, um, he's saying it's six periods of 40 seconds. It's 40 seconds anyway. I, I thought it was five seconds, uh, five, uh, five things of 40 seconds, but something like that anyway. It's 40 seconds. So black has two local co threats and white has one. So that's what's happening here. So the variation I'm, I'm talking about when I say that is... Okay. Oh, they've moved forward. Sorry, I, I missed the game variation. So black played here. White's dead in the center, so this is actually a valid co threat. So it's Black's turn to make a co threat. Black has a valid co threat here. Finally, I'm starting to understand this, I think. So Black has a valid co threat here. This would connect up all the black stones and it would kill white in the center of the board. Oh well, I guess this uh, ended with the second game after all. Um, so white has to answer this and white is running out of co threats. Even if white finds a co threat here, a local co threat like that is not going to win the game for white because white's dead in the center of the board. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was not correct there. So maybe maybe Black's, let, Black doesn't have time to answer it, though. So maybe this is something that might actually happen. Okay. Uh, okay, I still have to think about this. So how can Black continue? Black plays here and White kills it. Now we're back into a semi-like situation. Something like this. Okay, another semi. 
Wonder how this one turns out. Black has filled up a lot of his ter his uh, his liberties, though. This one is not so good for Black. Okay, so this is the game situation. Black has played this forcing move as a co-threat, and is taking back the co. And White tried this co-threat. Okay, and Black is running out of co-threats also. Black has one more co-threat in the center. So if black answers this, black does have a co-threat here. So it's either this one or this one. <laughs> and you see all of white's co-threats are filling his own liberty. So that's what makes it sort of complicated um, if we assume that something like uh, something like this is going to happen at some point. So maybe black takes... No, that's not working, is it? This is probably a win for white, though. Now, white's going to capture that one. Yeah, so maybe I was confused. Or maybe black's not going to answer that closer. Yes, so black's finished off that white group on the upper left. All right. So now it's a question of what's going to happen to this black group on the right. And it's not going to die out right. So this is going to be exciting still. It's maybe going to be another co. <laughs> okay. Confusing enough. So black has a kind of an eye here. This is actually going to be an eye with sente. Uh, so white can pull back here but cannot use the squeeze from this side because this is forcing. Oh? And yeah, black can capture here. Um, actually, white could be doing that anyway. That's maybe the only way for white to try to take away the eye. So white play here, like this. And if black cuts there, that ends with gote. And it means that white will be able to um, attack black on... Oh, but there's uh, there's an issue on, on this side here. Okay. So maybe something like that. So white looks like white has chances to win this one. So black will not cut at eight, and instead it will be like this. If black plays here, then there's going to be a co at L19 at some point. So that that looks like it's going to be a co that m might happen later. So white pulled back. Um, So at this point, white has to be sort of careful about this. Um, but maybe white can wedge at L15. L15 is definitely a move I would be thinking about now. If black answers on this side, white can cut here. If black comes, comes on this side, and in this case white is capturing... Oh. Black, uh, yeah, so I was wrong there. So white captures four black stones uh, in the corner, but we have to remember white's dead on the upper side, so white has to kill black outright, and that's white's problem here. So this would not be good enough for white. And white does have to go after the black group. So as it stands, black has only one eye in the, cent in the center. Um has a potential eye at this point. So white has to take away that eye. White has no way of taking away this eye because black can capture here once with Sente. So that's that's a valid eye. Has one eye in the center. Or if white leaves, white just has to be careful not to play this move, which would give black uh, the potential second eye. So that's one eye in the center. And white has to, this is the game position. 
Okay, White's playing that sequence there. So White's taking away that eye. It couldn't could turn into another kind of semi eye like thing. All right, so this is, so far it's the expected sequence. Black doesn't have time, oh, black has one eye here and one eye there. So there's an eye here. If black plays here, there's gonna be one eye there. Or if black plays here, there's gonna be an, an eye on that side. So black has one eye in the center and uh, the question is whether black gets a second eye here. So if white answers on this side, then the answer is yes, black does have a second eye. Just about whatever he does, he has a second eye. So this this is alive. And if white plays on this side, then it's going to be a call. But with this call, like you see, white has run out of call threats. Like when black wins this call, if black wins this call, then eventually the whole white group. So let's have a uh, position where black wins the call. Say white uh, manages to, oh, I don't know. What would white do? White would want to live here. I think the biggest problem is that black just has so many cold threats. So there's the cold threat here. All of these cold threats have to do with the black group. Black could start with the cold threat here even. This is a cold threat. Oh no, black doesn't want to do it that way, sorry. Black will play a cold threat. Okay. Okay, so black's gonna play a cold threat here. Let's just give all those oh sorry, not that one. All those cold threats to white, because black has a lot of cold threats. And here. Oh yeah. There are some complications. Black didn't want to do that move. Let's go back to the game. Okay. So black is covered here. But it's going to be that co. I think this co is going to be a win for black though. So it's like this. And at this point white does have to continue taking away black's eye. We all also have to worry about black's group on the left. There's some cases where that group is going to die. Okay, so white's going to play the co. <laughs> it's very entertaining, but a bit confusing. I think this is starting to look good for black, but there's still, there's still room for mistakes. So just uh, um, looking at the potential cold threat, so white's about to take the cold, but say at some later date, black, white plays a cold threat here, and black connects the cold, and then white has to take away black's, uh, white has to live, uh, black is alive on the, uh, but black's going to play here. Maybe something like that. 
we again could have another race to capture in the center of the board. So something like this. And this race to capture is starting to look good for black because we've got a lot of white's liberties have been filled up here. Um, so again, it's a, a I against a, a not not an I. So it would be like this. Mm -hmm. So again, the fact that black has an extra I and white does not have an I is going to make a difference here. So it's going to be very difficult for white to be filling the liberties in. Um, because black just has to fill the outside liberties. And uh, a lot of white's outside liberties are already filled. So it's going to be like this, like this. And already, like, we'll just assume black remembered to play this earlier. Uh, white's already run out of outside liberties, pretty much. So white still has to fill these moves. And like this, black keeps the eye. And white just has no way to, to continue filling liberties. Like, a long time ago, white ran out of liberties. So white was losing by more than two points, two, two liberties. Okay, so they're fighting the co here. But basically, the point that I've just demonstrated with this is that um, white's co-threats towards the top side. So white's playing co-threats here. Black's going to answer it. But uh, when white ends up playing co threat towards the top side here, uh, something like this, if white does that, it's not going to be a forcing move because black can play here and then can connect here, and black is going to win the race to capture. So white doesn't have six as a co threat. So that's a pretty important point that I was trying to prove to myself here. And. Okay, so they've made a kind of a trade. So black is connected here. That was unexpected and black is played here, that means the black group is now alive. Okay, I didn't see that happening. And the black group in, on the side is alive too. So everything, uh, black tried to settle it peacefully. He found a way out. So what happens here is if white connects here, black's going to connect, and the black group on the sides is alive. Black's group in the center... Oh, sorry, I, I'm wrong. Black's group in the center... So white connects here. Black needs another move here to make a living shape. So why did he do that? And white's going to capture these stones. So it was a trade for of this black group for the white group on the top. Now I have to count it again. So it was... Um, so if black had not done that... Uh, it looks like black could have won the co. So if black had, uh, let's, so in the game black played here, if black had captured this, in this variation, black always has this forcing move which will secure a life for the stones on the side. So that that's why I'm, everything is forcing for black. Could it be that he was running out of co-threats? And no, that's not the case, is it? Black can play here, black still has co-threats. So white was eventually going to run out of co-threats um, and play this one, which would not win the call. Because black can capture white in the center. So that's uh, that was my calculation, and he didn't do it that way. So instead, black connected here, which um, makes the eye on the side. And white can capture the black group in the corner. And I have to calculate the end game now. Okay. <laughs> Is there anyone still watching this? Okay, let's see. Wow, it's the climax though, isn't it? Okay, so black's a lie, and white's a lie. White's killed that. And, yeah.
Okay, let's just count the territory. So, um, okay, white has something like 80 points. Oh, yeah. So, this looks like it's going to be good for black still. Um, I got past 80 with some time to, with some extra points waiting to be counted. So let's just count White's territory once more. Yeah, White has a bit more than 80, but yeah, Black seems to have enough territory. Black has well over a hundred points. Okay, and it looks like Black has won the game. So White has resigned. Okay, so let's give a result here. I think I have the right result. Okay, yeah, at some point I put White wins there, but uh, it's changed to Black win. So it's too bad for Yan Dingxing. There were points in this game when he looked like he was winning. Uh, so uh, black won by resignation. My white resigned at this point. It looks like black actually has a fairly sizable um, territorial lead. So it's sort of difficult to sort out the whole trade that happened there. But white did lose, did have something like 10 points in the upper left corner. And then black got this huge territory there, which is only slightly bigger than the white territory in the lower left. But that was an area that started with some white territory on the left side and stuff like that. So on the whole, I guess the logic of it is that black gained some territory just by the size of the white territory that disappeared on the top side. And black was ahead to start with. So he sort of lucked out. He, he managed to win the game. Um, Shin Jin so did play a very dangerous variation there. So it was um, very exciting. Uh, so just to finish here, um, that's it for the LG Cup. That was the second the second game of three, but uh, Shin Jin So won both. Both of them, like, they, he was very lucky to win both games, but um, in both cases. So for those of you who are not signed up to my channel, uh, sign up to my channel, please. So I'll put a link here. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have subscribed to my channel already, but my channel on... YouTube, and I have a channel on Twitch. For those of you who prefer Twitch, I have a channel here, so I'll put that in here, just in case you want to be a member there. It's, um, of course, everything is free. And if you want lessons on the net, you can find a page here, which will give you an idea of uh, what the structure of that is. So you can support me at this place and for the $50 tier there's a reward that is a, a monthly teaching game okay so that's it for today um looks like i don't have a live broadcast tomorrow uh -huh. but i'll be back for on the 21st is what my plan is i have to check my uh, schedule but um i will want to do some games for the Nanxing Cup. So I think it sort of depends on something that might happen to my schedule, um, but I'm planning on doing that. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for um, staying to the end of the video. I'm sure it was a, a long night for some of you. And the video will remain on my site, so you can look at it again later. I will put in time um, chapters so that people can figure out what's happening at certain times. Okay, thank you, and goodbye.